everyone. Welcome to an oop. I can hear my audio. <laughs> That's going to bug me. All right, we're good. All right. Hello. Hey, welcome to a new episode of Lisa's Lair. I am your wonderful host, Lisa Wallen, aka Lisa Lawlin. I see we have a ton of new people in here uh, from Cup of Stream, which, you know, is really, really cool. And uh, hi, everyone. Hello. If you don't know who I am, I'll do a quick introduction. Um, my name is Lisa Wallen. I am a creator at EG. I'm also a stand up comedian. I'm a Twitch streamer. I'm a writer. I'm a host. I'm a huge weeb. I am a lot of things. Uh, and this is my show that's supposed to be bi weekly. Um, but we've had we've had a lot of busy things to do on our end. And now I'm glad I'm back. And before I bring out our special guest, let me just give you a I'm a blossoming gunpla. Oh, yeah, we're going to talk about that. Um, before we get the guest out, I am going to give you a quick introduction to the show. Uh, this is our one, the only show we have on Evil Genius's Twitch channel where I interview uh, creators uh, from stand up comedians to streamers to, to game developers, and we, we bond and we talk about nerdy shit. Um, but it, originally, it's to introduce all of our creators, and we've already done that, except for now, because we have a brand new creator with us, which I'm very very excited for and I'm going to bring her out right now. We met at Evo and we bonded immediately. Uh let's bring out our special guest Kappa Noodle. Yay! Kappa Kappa Kappa. Hey hey, hello. Hey hey Kappa. Oh my god, she got annoyed with me almost immediately cuz I kept saying Kappa Noodle cuz I thought it was H A and not A H and now you're just Kappa forever. <laughs> lies when i tell you at this point regular cup it doesn't work you have to say it that way every time or i'm not going to answer you because it makes me feel special so from now on that's because ha all the time that is our thing that's the only time i'm going to answer cup ha noodle oh my cat is in the room to blind me with the light um well i'm very excited to have you on the show and not just because you're our new creator uh, at eg but also we bonded almost immediately in a very dangerous way <laughs> uh for starters i found out which we're definitely going to get into into the show that both case and i are huge emo kids um and i was like oh my god i'm in love with this woman but <laughs> when we were at evo um we were just hanging out like ready to get in and i saw this guy in the distance that had like a button-up shirt and i turned to her and i was like i sh i really like that shirt and at the same time we thought to ourselves should i rob him <laughs> I was like, oh, no, it's we are not because we both said it out loud. So it's not that we had the thought, but it was just that instant. We could rob them. I don't know why they let us in. I really don't know why they let us in. I, and then we were side eye the rest of our time in there. It, it was the instant. That's how I knew it was real. We, we've been like this ever since it was meant to be. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. It's also because like, I don't know about you, because you've been you've been streaming for a while when did you start streaming um i've been cup since 2016 so oh, wow okay it, which isn't too long i feel like long enough for I, I guess for a lot of things i should know better but i don't but that's <laughs> fine so it's like long enough to get it or no but not as long as others like i don't think i don't know i know people have put decades yeah on Twitch, you know then you have like your jtv years it's like okay I, I haven't been here that long but i've been here long enough to know better i i get passes that i probably don't deserve well we're like pretty much the same age which i was really happy about because when i saw that we saw a new creator i was like i hope it's not like a 19 year old i was like i i want somebody our age so i don't feel like the old person that's streaming so which is like why we got along almost immediately because i was like oh we were in the same era of music and then you told me about your wonderful tattoo i don't know does your does your community know about your tattoo I think so. I know that they know that glass jaw. Yeah, they know because I got it with one of my community members. She's like my best friend now. And we have this thing where we get tats together now. We've been doing it since like TwitchCon 2019. So we've done like twice because, you know, we didn't get conventions. But so far we've gotten two. So my glass jaw tat is here. And then we do, we, they know everything I do, I say I do for glass jaw. So I create content so I could spread the word that is glass. Uh, I don't know if it's working though. I'm going to be, I don't, I doubt it's working, but you know, I try. You know, it is going to be bad when we hang out and we get a tattoo together, right? 
Are we going to get tats? I, I see, <laughs> looking, okay, so I saw your sleeve when we were at Evo, and I'm like, dude, I need more direction because you have this well thought out and elaborate sleeve going, and I'm just like, all my tats are sporadic and all over the place, and I'm like, I need some kind of structure in my life. That's what, every time I say, like, your sleeve, like, I'm looking at it, I'm like, I'm just doing things randomly, and you've made really cool choices, that's all. This actually is randomized though. Like when I first got, I first started getting it like down here and then the girl just kept adding to it. And, I, and then eventually I was like, I guess I have a sleeve. Like it wasn't planned to have me a sleeve. I just kept going into appointments to get more done. I was like, well, I guess it's a sleeve now. And then I'm finishing this one in a couple of days. So I'll be like double sleeve now. So double sleeved up. Okay. Double sleeved up on a Wednesday this week. <laughs> But before we get into our bonding part of the show, I usually do like a quick interview because I really want to le learn everything about you. I mean, so far oh, no. I know about your music taste and your shoe collection. Uh, <laughs> but I do want to know, because I need to know from the process from when you started streaming to now working for this wonderful company with all your new favorite coworkers in the entire world, uh, what got you into streaming? My brother did. And as crazy as it sounds, and it might be like a full circle thing, he he was big, like he always, fighters are his favorite. So he was always watching, you know, like Sonic Fox and Honey Bee. And it, this was back when like MKX was thriving. And it was like right before Street Fighter V came out, I think. And he was always watching all the tourneys, like the FGC tourneys. And so because of that, I would just be hanging out with him and he would and he showed me. And from there, it was like, well, I, I think I could do that. I, I want to try. And then from there, I just kind of, I, I started streaming, but I was streaming with my brother at first, but I think he just enjoyed playing games, but like talking and staying on a schedule that made it feel like a job. And he was like, no, because he plays more than me Wait, to does this he day. Still, does he still stream? No. Cause I, I think it felt like a job and it's like, I just want to play a game. I don't yeah. want to do all the, you know, but I don't, I, I, I have issues. So I was like, dude, this is fun. I like yeah. talking to people. I love arguing all day and yelling and starting to, you know, so because of that, I was like, this is great. So that's why I ended up, cause we did this in like 2014 to about the end of 2015. So then come the beginning of 2016, that's when he was kind of like, nah, I don't think streaming's for me. And I was like, I got issues. It's for me. I'm doing it again. And so then in 2016, that's when I just started over what and I made the name cup. That's awesome. What are you yelling at your chat about all day? What are they doing? How are they I don't you? know. I just know they started <laughs> and I know they can see me. I don't think I start most things. I think they do. And I feel like it's a safe space for everyone but me. And that's very fair. See, and I know they're yelling right now and that's, that, that's allowed, but it's like, I'll get like a Risa message. And I guess I'm low key in my feelings. Cause I see, I, I hang out on Twitch. I frequent streams and everyone's so nice. And it's like streamer, we love you. And you're so great. And then my community's like, yeah, I guess you're okay, but I'm still mad about that one time. And I'm like, what is that one time? I didn't do anything. I, I literally, I keep all my grievances in a notebook because they hurt my feelings on a regular. So, you know, oh I, I write them down. So one day <laughs> I can bring them up and say, you remember that one time you did this? I, it's never on me. It's always there. Instead fault. of banning people, you have like a death note, <laughs> just <laughs> writing their straight names. Down. I do have a death note, but it's when you first come into my house. I leave that there. So the first thing you see when you walk into my house is my death note. So you tread lightly when you visit my home. The oh, first when, thing you, mm -hmm. I was gonna say when I first started streaming, I was like, oh my God, everyone's like so nice, such cute, cute community. And then I had a subathon and I was like, wow, you guys are all mean and trolling me. And I made my sub goals, but all of them is just, it's just homework now. I just have a lot of homework. My switch, my chat, my chat's mean to me, but I mean to them too. I but think it's you, mean with love. It, it wasn't always love. this way. Let me tell you, it used to be a time where we were happy to see each other. And now it's like, now you're just taking your anger out on everyone, do, do you know, but it, it, it's weird because it's an odd synergy, but it works because they're still the only people where things happen day to day. I'm like, oh, I can't wait to talk to them tomorrow at stream. No matter what happens, they're, they're the first people I tell about what foolishness I've seen throughout the day. It gets weird when I don't see them. Maybe I'm used to getting yelled at at this point. It's weird not not streaming. When we went to Evo, it was weird. I was like, I haven't streamed. This Things are getting weird, man, you know. 
You're like someone's replying to me face to face with a voice. Oh Not no. Just to human to human interaction, weird, let me tell you. Was that your first Evo? Yes, it, it was. It was so fun. Oh my god. We uh I didn't know what to expect because like a lot of cons post COVID have been kind of hit or miss. Like San Diego Comic Con was great. Uh, PAX is all right. It'll probably be better this year. But Evo, like this is all of our first Evo, and I was I love the energy. I just love being around. Pa I don't care if they're what they're passionate. I love being around passionate people, especially for video games and watching that Skullgirls match. I want to play Skullgirls now. Like <laughs> that was the first time I'd ever truly just sat and watched Skullgirls. So like I was excited for MK11 and, and you know Street Fighter, Tekken. Like those are the ones I I know most. Marvel vs. Cap. So I was excited to actually just sit down and see it. And I'm like Skullgirls is really good. Like on some level, it reminded me of Marvel vs. Cap, and that's probably why it resonated with me. But I didn't expect it. I knew Evo would be a good time because I'm a fan of just watching fighters, but that was a really good time. Lisa. I, I was literally walking from one stage to the next, like, okay, this match is over. Let me walk over here. Okay, let's go see Street Fighter. I, my legs were hurting. I was making rounds, you know. I think Street Fighter is the only one I didn't want to watch because I'm just like, eh, it's fine. But MK11, that shit was amazing. And also Skullgirls. I didn't get to watch any Guilty Gear because we had a couple rough days and I didn't make it to Evo that day. <laughs> we were in Vegas, you know, to be fair. <laughs> we're like, you know, we are not streaming right now and we're hanging out with people. We might as well make Vegas out of it, you know, and it was fun. Um, but yeah, I am like so excited to go next year. If, I mean, I'm assuming that we'll go I hope to year. go again because now I know what to expect and I, I know how to map things out. I think last time, since it was our first time, we didn't know what we were doing. So we just did everything really, really fast. Spend money. I did pretty good. You kept setting me up for failure because every two seconds, I'm going back to the artist alley. Like we were just there. Lisa, please. Lisa was trying to get me to spend money every five minutes. Every two is like, I think we should go back. Like go back where? We were just there, Lisa. What, what are you doing? I was indecisive and I ended up not spending as much money as I thought I did, but that's only because I spent so much money at San Diego Comic-Con and I'm going to be spending money at PAX. So, uh, yeah, I'm a really bad influence. And you didn't get your Kirby really hat. You had one job. I had, I did not get the Kirby hat. I'm so pissed. Oh, it wasn't, but you also didn't get the board. No, I didn't get my skateboard oh, because I was like trying to bring that home on the plane. <laughs> that could have been a nightmare. And I would have lost my mind if I was told I couldn't bring the skateboard. You would have saw me on the news. Like, is that cup in <laughs> cuffs? Like if they would have told me no, I would have been I so sad. So uh, it was a very cool skateboard though, I will say. We were we were smart to wait till like the last day to go shopping. That's what I always do because I, I there's too many things I like and I need them to sell out so that my chances get more slim and then the one thing i want which is the damn kirby hat was gone but i'm i'm, I'm whatever i'll just buy well, it sometimes at conventions it. on the last day they'll be willing to haggle with you and you can like barter and be like hey can you bring this down because they usually don't want to pack it up and and send things home so they usually work with you you just yeah you usually get what everyone else didn't want so I the pickings are kind of slim right i pull the whole oh i only have 60 dollars in cash and when i go to pay them i like pull out a bunch of 20s <laughs> Oh, I swear this is someone else's money, not mine. <laughs> I do that every time. I am just, I'm, I want to spend money, but I'm also cheap and still think like a poor person. So I will bargain my way up if I have to. I, and I can talk my way out of anything. I'll be like, oh, I want this so bad. I'll be like, no, you don't. You're fine. You'll live. Keep walking. And I'm like, that's fair. Well, but then you know, it, it haunts me. It's okay. I was going to say, you taught me a very valuable lesson when we were at Evo. Do you remember about playing dumb? to get things that your way. <laughs> and I was like, I've never done that because I always want to look like a confident, smart women, woman in front of men. And Cup was like, no, 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 look stupid. And <laughs> I said it much better than that. And my chat already knows because they know this story. All I'm saying is sometimes playing dumb can work in your favor. And I'm sure they're yelling but they can't because I've already told them this story. Sometimes you play dumb. Again, so because, I don't feel mean. 
<laughs> Sometimes people like telling you things and although you already know the answer, let them do it because it works in your favor. So you're kind of like, yeah, I know, I know, but you just smile, you know, really? And it works, but you can't, you got, you got to say it better than that. At least you can't be like just playing dumb and letting men no. because men, you know, it, there, there's a, there's a, it's a, it's an art form when done right. And it help it helps me with, you know, I told you I was able to switch my fallout from Xbox to PlayStation because I pretended to not know what Xbox was and it worked. All right. So I took a free game I didn't know the colors and meant traded it up. It came with my, my, my Xbox, but I really wanted it on PlayStation. So I, I just played dumb and I, I was like, Hey, I, I don't, I don't know what this means. I don't think it works on mine. And they were like, well, technically it's not going to work on your PlayStation because it's Xbox. And I was like, really? Are you sure it's not Nintendo? I just started naming Both stuff. And they're like, yeah, I'm so, what am I thinking? And they're like, no, because Xbox is green and PlayStation is blue. And I was like, oh, I thought Nintendo was blue. They're like, no, that's red. And I'm like, you're so helpful. Thank you. And then he switched my game out and gave it to me on PlayStation and 4. And I didn't have to buy it again. And I, I'm going to take that as a win. And you know, he immediately went online and, and bragged about that to his friends. Like today I, I help a really pretty girl. Oh, I think so people dumb. really like helping people. And I think I made him feel very helpful. And I was just like, oh, that's so crazy. I just thought all games were video game. Who would have known, right? I think he was very happy to help me. And I was very happy to get Fallout 4 on PlayStation. It so I feel like everyone won. It, winners all around. I feel like game places, like I used to work in electronics at a grocery store um, like for like five years. It was like my dream job when I was 17. And I used to have people like, I used to have customers mansplain me the difference between like different consoles. I'm like, sir, I work here. Like, even if I didn't play video games, I'm required to know this. And they're like, yeah, but I just thought you should know the difference between like PlayStation but I, th all the time I'd have or they would want a TV like TVs weigh like five pounds now. They're not CRT TVs that weigh like 200 pounds. They're not big booty TVs anymore. Yeah. Those days are over. That, that's and fair. Would, and they would get like a 21 inch monitor and they'd be like, do you have a man that can help me take this out? I'm like, sir, this is 15 pounds. Like, why do you really even need help? All that's because I was seven. I was just a tiny, skinny, dorky seventeen-year-old girl, and everyone just walked all over me. The only part, fun part of that job was developing film because I saw some weird shit. Okay, but that like sounds very cool. Because I was about to say, you get to be nosy and you get to see yeah. what people are taking pictures of, and you also get to see who's not very good at it. I feel like you see a lot of thumbs. Um, a lot of this is very blurry. And what were you aiming at? Very yeah. interesting. You know, was I, it like the disposable camera error? Was it oh, back yeah. in? I mean, this is like 2006, 2007. This is like right when digital cameras started. So like, I didn't mind dealing with the random misogyny if I got to develop film because I got to see everyone's lives and and things. And if it was inappropriate, I had to tell the customer we couldn't develop it. And that was a fun part of my job. I was notorious for having like 50 million disposable cameras but they were all used but i never knew what was on them so like years later i would always be late it'll be like months later and i'll be like i'm gonna go develop these and then i do and they and i'm kind of like the hell was i doing with this camera it never made sense all my other friends were good at it it was like pictures of friends and mine's just like a blurry thumb a quarter of a tree what may have been a cd or something i don't none of my pictures made any sense that i don't i was never good at it Oh my God, Nicole! Thank you so much for the gift subs. We don't have Hi, any Nicole. alerts. We don't have any alerts yet, but <laughs> I see it in the chat. We'll have alerts eventually. We've. It's so funny. Like this is like I, I already mentioned it in the intro, but like this is like we do like some Rocket League and LCS stuff on this channel. But as far as like an actual show, this is the only thing we have on EG, and it's me. Um, and it like has nothing to do really with like any, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about obviously like league and, 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 you know, I've interviewed people on here that have worked for EG, but, but it is funny. Cause every once in a while I go people in the chat and they'd be like, what, what the hell is this show? Like, this is not eSports. We get I to hang like, out and shoot the breeze, though. That's a good time. Sometimes it's nice to just communicate and talk. That's all we got. It's all, it's, uh, it's just, they let, they, they let me borrow the platform for, like, every other Monday. I, it's like I'm renting out a room, but it's just a <laughs> dream. No, it is great, because, like, this is what EG is doing now. And I'm sure you've mentioned this to your community, that we are now 
expanding to other creators and which is why you're have joined this wonderful team and i'm very excited for you to be on this team because not only are we we get along immediately and we're dangerous together but we do we're probably going to be doing a lot of goofy shit in the future together and i'm really excited about that i look forward to shenanigans and antics you know i am i am excited um how did no. you get i was gonna ask how did you get connected with eg like how did that whole process start I received an email from Taylor and <laughs> first of all, Taylor is just awesome. Um, shout out to Taylor. The best shout out to Taylor. Oh, there goes. Hi, 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 Tay, AFK. Um, Taylor got me and it, it's really crazy because when it came to evil geniuses, I had heard of evil geniuses. Shout out to Nicole because y'all have been doing like a lot of really cool things. So it's like, I heard, but at the time, I wasn't really thinking about an org or joining an org. I don't really think about much of anything. I literally just create content. I love being able to stream and YouTube and I'm hosting and I'm like doing what I do, but I never, I don't make those kinds of plans. So I'm kind of just living and then whatever happens, happens. So when Taylor reached out, I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. And if I'm being honest, I always lead with no. That's kind of my thing. So I'm like, that's nice, but that's okay. I'm just, I'm just happy doing what I'm doing now. And Taylor hit me up and we talked and I was like, and it was like the first time we talked to and Taylor, I got to know Taylor a little bit and she was telling me about EG and their mission. And like I said, Nicole does a lot of great work. And then I learned that Nicole comes from finance and I was just like, oh, this is a great org. This is, I, it was one of those things when we, when we hung up. I was like, damn, they got me. And I, I kind of instantly knew like everything clicked. And from there, it was like, I knew I was going to talk to Taylor again, but I kind of already knew when we hung up that, you know, this is where I was meant to be. I don't know. It's kind of like a, I got a really good vibe from Taylor and it was a strong feeling. And it was like a lot to think about only because EG wasn't the first org that's reached out. EG was just the first time I said yes. So in like researching and seeing all the work that Nicole does and what you all do, like y'all do a lot for not just, you know, the org itself, but for like different communities and you're growing and you're expanding. And it's just really dope to see it and to be able to now say that I'm a part of it. It's insane. I, I, I was unbelievably excited and I feel like I made the best decision ever, which oh. is big because I usually make really bad decisions. I'm notorious for being questionable, you know, but oh. this I feel really good about. So, yeah. Well, I will say I also feel the same way because like I got hired uh, just a little over a year ago, right when a lot of like at least gaming industry and companies were like a lot getting exposed for like how they treat women and underpaying. And it's like, this is like a woman's ran organization. Like that's already a my dream. And also Taylor and I were friends before I found out she was my manager. So I was like, oh, well. Well, that makes things much easier. How are you going to break that, the ice right there? Right? <laughs> yeah. No, absolutely. It's so funny because, like, uh, you know, not – okay, we're just going to talk about Nicole for a second because she's in the chat. But, um, like, anytime I, like, get my, like, hair done or, like, I get, like, any time of, like, beauty stuff, people always ask about where I work. And I always talk about Nicole. And they're like, why don't I ever hear more about the CEO? She's amazing. They're always just highlighting these – stupid men CEOs and all this stuff. And they're all like shitheads. I'm like, I know Nicole's the shit. She's great. I mean, except for the, when we first started working there and she surprised me by coming to my comedy show with every single person I worked with. And it was very nerve wracking. Cause I was like, that cannot be an except. That's I had that is one, awesome. I had one day at work and then I had a headlining show and she posted a secret meeting to everybody. I work with people I haven't even met yet to come to my comedy show where I talk about very inappropriate things. And I'm like, I hope they know this is, this is off the clock. <laughs> off the None clock of this material. counts. You, you've officially at timeout. <laughs> and now you you know you're good when you're done time in and then you're you're back to normal it's all good well it was also go cool for me too because like i mean most people are like based in like la and i was seriously thinking about making that leap when i didn't i was like i don't really have a plan blah 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 and then it's like it's almost like it was meant to be the one esports organization in seattle reached out to me and i was like okay i already live here so that's an easy move for me but but yeah, no, it's great. I I love working here. And, you know, we, we've only been doing the creator correctly thing for about a year. And we are just now like 
starting to launch all of our YouTube stuff. Like, you know, it, take, it takes a while to build like these mini guess, startups yeah. and these big organizations. And so you're coming in at a great time. You know, like we, we, we held off getting new creators for a while because we, we still wanted to have like a solid plan and, and you're in it. And now, uh, now I'm really excited to do stuff with you and yeah, not steal I... shirts from random strangers on the street. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We'll see I, that, that it, we may up this ante. I don't know how, but if anyone can, it would be us. So we, we shall see. And we just got a raid again. Sorry with no alerts. Sorry, Lex. Hi, T Lex. Hello. Thank you so much for the raid. Who was an also an, an amazing guest on this show earlier. I don't know if you know who T Lex is, but she is a streamer. Lex streams is based out of Vancouver and she nice. is a variety. She's amazing at video. She plays like hard shit. Like I thought I played hard shit. She plays hard shit. And so I had her on this show. I think she was my first non EG guest and she was amazing and a good time. And, and we miss you so much. T Lex. If we, if we hire Canadian creators, I'd want you to work with her. <laughs> and that's a, that's the thing about Twitch too, is that like, I mean, before streaming, I should ask before I like dip into my story, since I'm technically interviewing you before streaming, were you doing any entertainment, anything industry stuff? Or was it just like video um, games and streaming? No, um, not for work or anything. No. Growing up, I was in a band. I did do that. I, I play a couple instruments. Were. I was in a band. Not going to lie. Um, <laughs> but, and then, I'm yeah, sorry. Was, let's let's. Pause. What was the name of your band? No, I can't do that. Wait, because I don't know if you... I was in a band. It was called Project Rehab. Um, you can't hear some stuff. The um, the end of my YouTube videos. That was like one song, and we did it for a while. And what happened was, is my partner ended up leaving me, not in a bad way, but he started doing music licensing which was like oh. way cooler than what we were doing. I'm like, go do music licensing. Like, yeah, we went and we got like an EP mastered and they really, and they liked his work. So it was one of those things where, yeah, he music licensing and he did that on the side for fun. And yeah, I, I was in a band, but it was never anything real. I promise. It wasn't like we're going to be platinum selling artists. It wasn't that I, I, I sang and I played either rhythm guitar, or I'm sorry, lead guitar, bass, or keyboard. But I also play ukulele. I don't know. I play drums. Can we My hear this drums. project rehab but, one day? Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> the, you, you, you absolutely don't have to, but it was a good time. <laughs> I love I, you don't have to. You absolutely don't have to, but happy to be here. I, I was here for the songwriting side of it and just... Okay, you know, okay. coming up with the chord progressions and figuring. I like the process of it PGC more. Band, so, you know, go. no, we're mine. gonna. Have, do we get to be the official band for EGCC? The official, band, official band for EGCC. Oh my god! Well, everyone from Lex Stream, let me. I totally forgot to do like a quick introduction because I just immediately started talking about Lex because I love her so much. But um, my name is Lisa. I am Lex was like one of my first streaming friends, and now we try to rate each other as much as possible. And this is my show here on on Evil Genius Twitch channel, and I am interviewing our brand new EG creator, Kappa Noodle, <laughs> and she is absolutely lovely and a doll. And I'm just really excited to be here and talking to you right now. And uh, in fact, before I even like met you, I like obviously like followed you on socials and stuff and like creeped on your stream. I was like, oh, my God, I'm gonna make her my best friend. I was <laughs> so anyways yay everyone welcome for joining and if you are interested in following us like we each stream on our own channels i'm lisa lal and this is cup of noodle and we both you do you do a lot of variety stuff you were streaming yeah. late today what were you doing today by the way there was a new game and i and i was told you got to play this game it's really good and i had heard of it and i kind of saw it and i kind of i did that thing where you know you see a game and you're like yeah whatever i'm good everyone else can have it i'm probably going to do something different and i didn't think much of it but i'm like okay i haven't been here because evo and stuff so i'm gonna play the game that they want me to play and within like 10 minutes i'm like this is the best game ever but you pretty much to save the day you have to start a cult 
So the game is called Cult of Lamb, I believe. I never remember the names of these games. I just boot them up and play. I believe it's Cult of Lamb. But pretty much we started a cult. It's called the Covenant of Nude. Um, although I feel like a lot, what, what is it? Illuminuti? That could have been a good name You know, it's fine. We are the nudist. All, all, all of my cultists, they are the nudist. And we started a cult. And I don't know. I, I had two cult members leave me. And the game is really cool because your community, there's an extension, like an integration, where they can actually create their characters and join your cult. Two of them left me because they, they're naysayers and they don't believe in the dream. And they were also starving. But they it was my first cult. day. Lisa, it's my first day. Everyone can't eat on day one. I, it's not my fault. It's, it's fine. T tomorrow is day two. I can't guarantee food, but I can guarantee enthusiasm, right? Is a couple it, jokes. You know. It's like an adventure game. How is it played? Like it's like It kind of plays like a Hollow Knight, kind of like, uh, not turn-based RPG-ish, but like a Bayonetta, like more of like a hack and slash. And so you just, you get to come in because there's like a couple games in one. So it can be like, not really starred. Stardew or like Animal Crossing, so I can decide where I want to put things and build my little cult organization, but then I traverse into the wild. I guess like Stardew, because you can do whatever okay. you want on your farm, and then you go into the mines, and then you fight for your life. It's kind of like that, and then I bring home resources in hopes to make my nudists not hate me, but again, two of them my did. My nudists so. not hate me? Yeah, I, I need the nudists. I've never played Don't Starve, so I was scared to equate it to that and be a liar. Okay, so I guess more like Don't Starve. But it, it's really cute. And I found myself like, not me being committed to being a cult leader. We get to have sermons. And I actually, I've been having actual sermons just because, you know, I got to be 10 toes in. So we have sermons. We did a ritual You're today. the leader. You're the leader of your cult. You know, your community is your cult. You got to lead them, you know? You're just making an interactive version of your actual stream is what you're doing. <laughs> we are not a cult. I except promise. For except for you're wearing clothes. That's the only difference. So I hope. I don't know about the people behind the chat, but. I, they don't listen to me. I feel like if I tell them to wear clothes, they would say, up yours, Kaysen, and then they would live their best life. And I'm not a hater, so I just want them to be happy. So clothes oh are God. optional, and that's fair. You know, it's all, it's all good. So do you mainly do like variety games or do you, cause you do other stuff too, besides just um, like playing video games. Predominantly games. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely variety. I have been since about 20, 2018, most of my time. Cause I almost unadvertedly became a fallout streamer and I didn't realize that's what I was doing. But like we played fallout four and then we played new Vegas and then we played three. And then I was like, Oh my goodness, we're going to play two and one. And then it's going to be official, right? And it's like, this is all we do. It was an accident. I didn't mean to, but I was new to streaming and I didn't know any better. So I just completely stopped playing Fallout. So I kind of had to start all over again because people were like, dude, where's Fallout? And I'm like, dude, no, I don't know. I don't wean myself off of things. I either is or I ain't. So once I said no, I just stopped playing. We were like in the middle of Fallout 3 and I just stopped playing. And I wow. never played it again. I played Fallout 76 you like ghosted once. ghosted Fallout. I didn't mean wow. to do it. I thought I was here for all of the games and inadvertently sat and played a single game. Oh <laughs> well, it was different with just a one, one franchise and that was it. And it's not that I didn't love Fallout. I swear I did. I, I have a pit boy. I have the helmet. I did. But I wanted to do all the things because I grew up playing like everything. I've been playing since Super Nintendo and I never really like I have favorite games. Resident Evil is like one of my favorite franchises. Zelda is in my top franchises. Tomb Raider. But it's like I play everything. So because of that, I kind of wanted to keep that going. At this point, we're variety. And if you name it, we've most likely played it. But we predominantly play horror games. We, we oh, play funny. a lot. The same thing happened to me because I've only been streaming for a little over two years. And like the first franchise I really started streaming was Yakuza. I played all of them. So I went from zero from Kiwami to, to two, three, four, five, six and judgment. And then everyone's like, you're a Yakuza streamer. And then I got was like, well, then I was like, well, I want to take a break. I want to get burnt out. And then I started playing Souls games and I turned to a Souls streamer because I played Bloodborne, Sekiro, Dark Souls 3. And then everyone's like, what the, what are you doing? I'm like, well, you I'm just going waves. Like you pick a game and you're going to play every game in the franchise. I and then you're on to the, and there's literally nothing 
Nothing wrong with that. And that's very fair. I finally played Yakuza for the first time. I want to say either last year or 2020. So, um, Someone got it for me. And I never gave Yakuza a chance only because I thought it was going to be like True Crimes. I don't know if y'all, if anyone remembers the game True Crimes, I want to say it was on PlayStation 2. True Crimes was not very good. And in my mind, I thought that's what it was. And so I was like, oh, I'm never playing Yakuza. So or whenever like they Shenmue. would. Shenmue. Yeah, I never played Shenmue growing up because I didn't have a Dreamcast. I, I got an N64 and my brother got a PlayStation and it was only two of us. So Dreamcast never happened. So because of that, Shenmue didn't happen. So my only interpretation I've ever had was true crimes. And I was just like, dude, I don't want true crimes. So because I never played Yakuza and I finally did. And it's a really good time. So I was super late. I actually enjoy Yakuza. And then the next Yakuza that came out was the turn-based one, which... Oh, which one? Which Yakuza did you play? Yakuza? I played... I was looking at my games to see. I, I don't know which... It was the one that came out right before the turn-based Yakuza. I don't want to lie. I'm trying to look at all my games, but I don't six? see it. Yakuza? Six, Yakuza. I, I think the more Yakuza. you say Yakuza, it gets... Yakuza? <laughs> <laughs> I just like saying it like that now. Yakuza. Yeah, I I don't know if it's like my OCD or what it is, but when I deep dive into something, I get really into it and I want to do all. But then, yeah, it's like the variety curse where it's like people are like, oh, that person is a Yakuza stream. It's like, actually, Zelda is my favorite series, but everyone just assumes it's other things. And now, like, next week, I'm starting the Metal Gear Solid series. And like, that's going to be my new obsession. It's pretty cool because you're going through. So for those who haven't seen it, now they get to do it and y'all get to do it together. And then for those who have and love it, now you just get to run it back. And right. I think that's very fair. Well, I also am kind of like you, except for like my sister and I grew up strictly on Nintendo. Like I had Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and I played some PC games in like 2014, 15. But it wasn't until I started streaming that I really deep dived because I got a PlayStation 4, you know, when that came out, played a few games and then now I'm streaming everyone's like well now you got to get through all the big franchises and I'm like okay like I, I I still haven't even played Last of Us like it's like there's so many games I'm I have jealous not of played. you I think it's because there are I didn't get into PC until much later like the only thing I knew about PC was like Oregon Trail of course and I played that at yeah. school and then we played like this Jack and the Beanstalk game when I was in elementary but like the most I had on PC was like what is it Space Cadet Pinball and Ski Free and Dope Wars, which is literally a browser game. And what is it? Diner Dash? I don't think any of those count, right? So I didn't. Ghost Tycoon? I knew nothing about PC. I was a console kid. Like I grew up, my brother was Nintendo. Then he got Super Nintendo. I got Sega. So whatever he didn't get, I got the opposite. Um, I want to say I went in 64, he went PlayStation, PS2, and then eventually I got an Xbox and he was 360 and I was PS3. So, you know, we needed one more sibling to make, make up for, you know, but I'm telling you, I tell everyone, like, I'm convinced if we would have had one more us, if we would have had some weird sibling that was like a paste eater and collected paper clips and didn't even play video games like oh you suck. I, I'm <gasps> convinced if it was one more, it wouldn't have worked out that way because that would have been like the perfect triforce situation and life isn't that nice we are i don't know i would have had a brother or sister that was just useless they're outside playing on the skip it or something the evil yeah. twin that's popular and doesn't know what a video game is playing with them skip it's and and i don't know pogs okay i like pogs i take that back but you know just something just a, a useless sibling that did nothing I for use, us i like it's like if you're not a nerd you're useless yeah. my it, it well it's like my my sister and i like it's weird my dad and my sister are huge science fiction nerds like massive like they're really into star trek Battlestar galactica star wars like and, and I'm like the outcast nerd of my family. Like I like, like I will watch Star Trek, but I don't like Star Wars. I I never was into Star Wars. And so they'll like be you, bonding over things. And I'm like, here, like, what have you been watching? I've Lisa? never seen Star Wars. Um, Good. I, I honestly, since I was like, 10. and I, I apologize for this. Like every May 4th, everyone comes in may the fourth be with you and while i know what you're talking about i don't perpetrate fraud so i'm like i appreciate it but i'm gonna be honest i don't know and y'all aren't gonna catch me like i feel like star wars is one of those movies where even if you've never seen oh, get it out both you, of you this is why we get along no, we haven't watched I'm, star wars <laughs> 
I feel like I know everything there is to know. I feel like I know most of the answers oh, to I most lie. of your questions. You know, I lie I, all the time. I'm like, it I've just seen never all of them. happened for me. And I'm convinced when it comes to Harrison Ford, if it were up to me, no one would know who Harrison Ford is because I've never seen Indiana Jones. But then movies that no okay, one Indiana can, Jones is great. I never there's there are certain movies never happen, but movies that no one in the world cares about. I'm like, hey, yeah. I love. White men can't man. jump. Have you seen that? You know, <laughs> like the movies that no one's thinking about, I love them. But for whatever reason, they never happened for me. And after a certain point, I didn't see The Matrix until I started streaming. That it was never like happened. With, with Brendan Fraser. Like I watched, a, like The Mummy was great, but I'm like, I liked him in like Encino Man. Like my, the weird movies that he was in was like my shit. And then it was like, oh yeah, he was also in The Mummy, you know? What like, was that Brendan <laughs> Fraser movie? The one, yes, and that is my movie. <laughs> and I, to Blast this day, past. <laughs> when I see a sunset, I'm like, oh, to this day, I love Bedazzled. That movie was really good, and it's unbelievably quotable. But I've never seen Indiana Jones. But I will sit in front of y'all and say, I love Bedazzled. You can't take me serious. I do and I'm lie. sorry. I lie to Star Star Wars people all the time. I'm like, oh yeah, I've seen all the movies because I just don't want to fucking talk about it. Like I'll be like, have you seen all the movies? Yeah, every single one. I've you know, I, I would, but I always feel like bad it. if I say, because if I lie and then they ask me questions, I'm going to be like, yeah, that part. I don't want to get caught slipping. So I don't lie. But I have had moments where people will like kind of take it as disrespect that I've never seen it. But I don't know. I'm real selective with movies. Like, I've seen Twilight. Well. I've seen Twilight. I don't know if that counts, but I've never seen Harry Potter. So I haven't I, seen Harry Potter or Twilight. Nope. And, and Twilight's based here and I still haven't seen it. I don't know. Twilight. First of all, these movies are a slippery slope and none of y'all tell anyone this. If you see one, you see the first one. So you got to see the second one and then you got to see the third one and then you got to see the 15th one. That is how I accidentally read all of what is that book? Fifty Shades of Grey. You got to be careful with what you get into because if you read the Fifty Shades of Grey is just Twilight for adult women. That's it all really it is. is. And I read the first book. All it is. And I, I read that at work. And because a coworker had a tablet. But then I was like, okay, fine. I'll read the stupid book. So I read it during lunch and I finally finished it. But then I had to see what came next. And then I had to get the third one. And now to this day, I have the freaking collection in my bookshelf because I have no shame. So if you ever come to my house, you're going to be like, so you have the complete box set of Fifty Shades of Grey. Mom <laughs> thing, that is the most mom thing about you I think I've ever seen is you owning this collection of Fifty Shades it of Grey. It wasn't my fault though. I didn't go into it saying, oh, I've always wanted to read this. It was just, it presented itself to me. So I did to be a team player. You know, but there's nothing wrong with checking out some weird soft core porn made for women over the age of 50. It's okay. Lisa, it's not even, let me tell you, I'm not saying it's overrated. I'm saying people hype it up and I don't oh, even yeah. know how they understood most of it because there were more typos, punctuation and spelling errors than I've ever read in a book in my life. Just run on sentence after run on sentence. Oh. I'm like, who's following along with this? I, I had to stop and reread parts because I'm like, this is not English. It what am I reading it I ruined know. a generation of women and dating because now men are like what if i'm like christian gray i'm like you are a weird techie bro that works for amazon you're not christian gray <laughs> I only saw one of the movies and I was like, yeah, I'm not getting involved in this. I literally had a highlighter out because, and I'm like, wrong, wrong. and I'm just, I'm spell checking this book. Let me tell you. And towards the end, they just, she stopped trying. I'm like, there's no way people are excited, but I finished it, which means I'm allowed to complain because I actually finished the series. So you hate Reddit, but then bought it. I hate read the first one. I didn't want to do it. And I did for friendship and work. This is why you don't talk to your coworkers. They set you up for failure. I was minding my business, probably playing the Sims at work. And it's like, just check it out, Case. And it's a good book. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it now. I just want to read it for the grammar errors. I want to know what the audiobook is like more than anything. 
Like, yeah. if a, are they reading it with the errors, or are they? Who reading... is the narrator in the? I audio need to know. Book? Is there a because narrator for it? Please let it be. I want someone with a very strong voice, like a Willem Dafoe, a Morgan Freeman. Morgan if Freeman not, reading it, Face Shades of Grey would be and terrifying. And if I can't do that, then just give me someone like a Danny DeVito, right? I want a voice that I'm not expecting. I don't want it to be sexy in the slightest. I want to feel like I'm learning. I, I, I really. I, I, I want a very strong voice actor for this. For... Rest in peace, Gilbert Godfrey. But there is a YouTube video where he reads lines of Fifty Shades. Really? <laughs> and it's horrifying, obviously. But yes, if I can get Danny DeVito to read the sex scenes in Fifty Shades for me, that would be my favorite audiobook ever. I'd be like, this is therapy. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Twilight, though. Twilight was the thing, too, where it's like during the time that it was like hyped up, you know, and then later on, you're like, a, this, this series is really problematic. Like, why is this old ass fucking vampire hanging out in high school? All like three million, but it's right? okay. We're not going to question this. And like the entire, well, the time of premise is stupid. Not only that, like the acting was terrible, but I just remember in high school, oh, people were just all over that. Like, it was the most amazing thing ever. And I'm like, this looks stupid. Like, am I just. Am I, I only saw the first one because I'm a sucker for good marketing and damn it, if Paramore didn't get me with the code. So I was like, Haley, how could you? So I watched the first one. But by default, that means you have to watch the second. And once you commit, then you're just watching all of them. But I never went to the movies to see them. I personally never understood the hype. I guess it was supposed to be a love story. And on some level, I blame Twilight for us not getting just movies that aren't like huge franchises i miss the days back in the day where you just get a movie and it's not connected oh God, to some same. ridiculously big franchise where it's movie after movie as much as it's just one movie and it had a moment and then it's over i miss those days i do too i also miss like the silly comedy days we don't really get much silly comedy anymore i've noticed like we get like weird random like amazon prime and hulu but it's not the same it's not like the <laughs> Judd Apatow era. Yeah, or, I love like, the days of the 40 year old virgin or like yeah. waiting and you know, like waiting didn't have to happen again. Only the first one, you know. <laughs> I, re but. I, I re watched 40 year old virgin recently and realized that my room just looks like Andy's. Like, I was like, oh, I'm the one with all the figurines. That movie did not age well. I was like, nerds are hot now. Okay, let's not shame it him. A, it seems like it was so long ago, but it really wasn't. 2004 i mean it was 2004 was a long time ago it was almost 20 years ago <laughs> that is crazy to me um now i think about it oh my god i see south park king said south park what is it bigger longer and uncut that is one of my favorite musicals and i know that's pretty bad but i like musicals and for what it's worth that movie was kind of a masterpiece i, I don't know i, I like Ten uh, Tenacious D, The Pick of Destiny, yet another oh. musical. That is my movie. Um, what about Flight of the Concords? Technically, that's a musical. Yeah. <laughs> I, I enjoy Fl Flight of the Concords was up there with like Curb Your Enthusiasm for me. And Always Sunny, where it's like they have really pivotal moments of greatness. <laughs> and I don't know what I would have done without them. Like, I don't know. I loved Curb Your Enthusiasm. I still I do. I've been meaning to ask you, as far as like your chat versus you go are you, you is it usually people around your age or younger i feel like we have a little everyone in their mamas in my chat like honestly i i have community members that i met when they were in like eighth grade getting ready for freshman year and now they're grown and they have a job and they go to college and i've seen community members graduate from college and high school and start families. So I think we range anywhere from, I don't, I don't know. I know we like high school till about grown and which is why I feel like chat's always fun. And that's probably why we argue with each other because it's just different timelines and we're like syncing up together. So I kind of just sit in the middle. So I remember like the simpler time, but I'm also like with the old heads. Older and, and shaking, yelling at me. Right. And I'm shaking my get off my lawn, punk. Like on that level, I get it. Like I'm old and angry, but I'm still young enough to get it and get what's going on. So I don't know. I feel like it's a nice collective of everyone. Not to mention I'm always learning something new because you like, know what does the Monka S mean. What does poggers mean? <laughs> the ones in high school tell me what's going on. And I'm like, 
Okay, say it again, but say it different. Say it better. I don't get it. And most of my time, most of the time, all I've learned is I'm really happy to be old. I don't want to, I don't want to be a teen anymore. Um, I don't want to, I don't want to be in my early twenties. I don't want to have an the best years ever so far. You just wake up and have an existence for no reason. You don't even know why I don't miss being a teenager. Like you just wake up with a neck ache now. That's it. <laughs> phantom limb pains are not fun, right? You just wake up like, I think something's going to hurt today. And it does. And that's fair. But I, I would still take that over being young and just confused and raging against the machine. And I don't think younger me would be friends with me today. I don't yeah. think she would like me. She would probably call me a sellout. And be like, oh, yeah. well, what is the sheep noise? Bleh. I don't think she would mess with me. I was really edgy when I was younger, but I blame Rage Against the Machine and System oh, I was of the so edgy when I was younger. The reason why I ask is because, like, obviously you and I bond on a lot of things we grew up on. But do you ever see that disconnect, like, with your chat? Like, where it's like, like, for example, I, well, my people know I love quote and fly of the Concords in my stream. And Wayne's World and old Simpsons episodes and like a lot, most of the people get it. But then everyone's going to be like, what's Fly of the Concords? I'm like, oh, you sweet summer child. You missed but an The era. fun thing is that means you get, to, you get to hook them up and you get to show them something new and expose them. And honestly, I feel seen. I spend a lot of time streaming and like just hanging out with chat because I always talk before we play games for way too long. And then they yell at me and say, sis, boot up the game. And that's fair. Um, where I'm like, where were y'all when I was younger? Like, we would have been best friends. We would have been hanging out. Because usually, I, I don't know, like, no different than like, when I met you. And it's like, yeah, I have a Glassjaw tattoo. And you're like, wow, you listen to Glassjaw. And it's like, you know who Glassjaw is. That's freaking crazy. I'm used to people not knowing what I'm talking about. But with streaming and being that, you know, it's a global thing, there's always someone that understands me on some level. And that makes me really happy. And like, and vice versa, someone will be like, hey, do you remember back in the Attitude Era when, you know, Stone Cold beat up Vince McMahon in the hospital? And I can say, I do. And then they feel seen. And I love, I love that we see each other, I guess. There's always someone that knows what you're talking about. And I love that. Oh, yeah, she definitely. I showed you the picture of me when I was 12. Yeah. You look yeah, so like edgy. Immediately. Like, just a little ball chain necklace, my world industry board, and my wall, my grammar wallpaper with a system of the down poster. Oh, yeah, we would have been besties. We would have been trouble. <laughs> like, I, I, like, concerts were my fucking life from when I was like a let. Like, I, it's so funny how, like, people think ha kids having cell phones now, oh my God, they have so much freedom. I was like, I didn't have a curfew. My parents just let some you know, random kid pick me up when I was 12 years old, take me to a con. They exactly. Give a fuck. <laughs> I feel like we had more freedom without any way of knowing where we were. Right. We did not have. Now, like all these kids have phones, but they're not allowed to do anything. Right. But back in the day, I would leave and I would just get home and the rule was you just better come home when the street lights come on. I went to my first concert when I was about 15 by myself. My first concert by myself was Lincoln Park. And I didn't even have a ticket. And I remember my mom was pissed. And she was like, Kaysen, you can't go to this. You don't have a ticket. What happens? This is when you can buy tickets at Will Call. Remember those days before you got your tickets online? And so I was like, well, if I can't get a ticket, then I'm going to sit outside and I'm just going to listen to it from a distance. And that's fair. So my dad was like, just let her go. She's getting older. And I was able to get a ticket. And I got to see Lincoln Park. And it was and worth it. And it was like $30 back then? Yeah. It, I saved for that little ticket and it was like a couple cities over, maybe like 40 minutes away, but I did not own a cell phone. Oh and I God. don't, my parents were just like, I'll right. see you just when take, you get home. Take the just, bus, figure it out. You had to like look up the bus routes on the thing. Oh my God. It was hilarious. Yeah. Like my first concert, I went, I didn't go alone because my parents would technically always take me. My mom would take me to concerts, drink in the bar, and then we're done. She'd be like, well, we got to sober up for a bit. Let's go get some food. I'd be like, oh, OK. The first one was a Treyu, and from Autumn to Ashes when I was 14. Imagine that being your first concert by yourself. And I didn't listen. Like, this is before I was really emo, but I didn't listen to, like, that type of emo, like, the post-hardcore, whatever they called it. I won tickets through a local radio station. I went, and I, I was ticket like... ticket wins? That, that was a big deal back in the day. <laughs> Calling radio stations. That takes me back. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I won because they were like, 
They're asking us about, uh, I remember how I won the tickets. They were asking us about, uh, you had to name like five local emo bands from Seattle. And I was just like, Emery, this Providence, Anne Berlin, Acceptance, and like my fucking 12 year old girl voice. And no, like, you Acceptance want... was from Seattle. That's they very are. cool. I learned oh, yeah. something new today. Permanent. I have that album somewhere. It's Thanks. in my vinyl. Yeah, I did not know that. Not Story Checks Out. I love it. No, because <laughs> when I saw Lincoln Park, I went with friends because one friend was all, had a car because this is when you could drive at like 16. Remember the good old days? So oh, this is when you had friends that were 16. Yeah. So, 11. yeah, I, I, you know, so I was about 15. I think I was 10th grade. And that and so I was able I, I was supposed to I went after work and we went and we saw Lincoln Park. And if I'm being honest, I don't even remember who opened, but it was like a really good time because it was like hybrid theory and reanimation. But sadly, it was right before Meteora. So I didn't get Meteora, but it's OK. But that was like my first concert by myself. And it was worth it. Let me tell you. And ever since then, I don't know. Concerts were always my thing, like Warp Tour. I, I Went I to, warped for 10 years in a row. Oh my God. It's a mini a warp tour. Um, only band I've never seen though from that era was the used. And it wasn't because I couldn't, it was just choices were always made where there would be more than one stage. And I would be like, oh, I'm sorry, Burt McCracken. I'm going to go this way. I'm going to go see, you know, and I motion city soundtrack is here and I really want to oh see God. them, you know? So it's like, I had to go make choices. I had to go the other way, you know? The used open up for Boxcar Racer and Finch, the only time Boxcar Racer and Finch toured here, and I got to see them. I was like 14. I was Finch live. You know, my husband went to school with, I think, the bass player from Finch, oh. and he said it very casually, and I was like, well, were y'all friends? And he was like, we were good or whatever, and I'm like, imagine just casually saying, oh, I went to school with Finch. Yes. And I'm like, you, do, you, do you know who Finch is? He's like, no, I've heard of the band, though. I, he was in a band. And I'm like, dude, that's Finch. Whatever, man. That's cool. Finch, Finch is like glass jaw, though, where it's like they this had like a really, really solid run of like like a few albums and then they just kind of drifted off. So unless you were super like I was super into Finch, like people just kind of like when you bring it up now, I'm sure there's people here in the chat being like, oh, shit, I remember that band. But it's like me, I just, I, my memory is garbage unless it comes to music. I remember what? everything. I found my iPod the other day. What'd you oh find? What, what, what was on it? Oh, every, oh, you would have cried. How emotional did you get? I, exactly. I, I, it brought you back. It on, I brought it on stream and I did like the little clicky thing as like an ASMR and everyone's like, oh my God. Oh my God. I bought a charger for it and everything. It still works. I've been making like play. Oh my God. I got to share my emo playlist with you. You're going to cry. I hate, I hate that we. <sighs> Oh, I hate that we can't listen to this stuff on stream because I'll just like ooh, be like, oh, all the audio is done now. And I'm like, dang it, because I'd love to just sit here and we can cry over music while everyone's like, I think they'll be friends. <laughs> they'll be fine. Letters to you was a moment. Um, we're, I don't know, Glass Shaw and Thursday and Taking Thrice. Back Sunday, which thrice. Poison the Well. Thrice is another band that doesn't miss. That's all. I, I feel like Taking Back Sunday. I don't think I've ever heard a bad song. The Used oh, yeah. had a very prolific moment where they didn't miss, but I think Bert heard himself, so they're a little different now. Oh, yeah. And like, well, there was another band that was here recently. I did a comedy show and they have like three stages and one of the stage has uh, scary kids scaring kids which was like a little past my emo era but i i didn't know that i have a song or two from them on my spotify emery is on my spot yeah. uh, brand new of course um brand new was in my top i really like them i did until i met jesse lacy and he sucks but i got the vibe from he him He's an asshole. And also, okay, so here's the thing. I saw him live. I've seen Brand New live every time they came here for like 10 really? years. Really? And was it like Deja and Tendu days? Like what days was it? Or it was, Jesus it was, Christ days? It was Deja and Tendu days when I first started seeing them. They were a very interesting ba band. I'm sure everyone can agree on this. But Brand New like kind of grew up with We We Did. When they first came out, they were just like ranty little punks. And then they kind of switched to like emo punk and it's like jude straight. law in a semester abroad it right? was so angry but i was here for it could i relate not really i always say gonna... i've seen more spine and jellyfish all the time 
<laughs> but like no so they had the the devil and god raging Saibi album came out which was like completely off the rails from everything else they'd done but i still loved it and i went to go see them live when they did the album it's like i was in high school and when jesus christ came on he was singing like with his acoustic guitar and in the mic and everyone's singing and he literally goes shut up i want to be the only one singing this and then everyone kept singing it, and he stops and goes, I said, shut the fuck up and like yelled at the audience. And we're like, what? And he just finished the song. And it was really awkward. <laughs> what do you do at that point? I See, um, I met this is too. when you he, see he, things that you can't yeah. unsee. Who he, does that? He was on a plane on the way back from L.A. I've told the story before, and he was sitting in front of me and um. You know, I was really nervous because I recognized him. We're waiting for our luggage. I walked up and I was like, hey, are you Jesse Lacey from Brand New? And he was like, yeah, like obviously not wanting to talk to me. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I'm just I'm such a huge fan. I know it's late. And he goes, I was like, he's like, are you going to the concert when you're here? And I was like, no, it's sold out. And he goes, oh, that's too bad. And then his manager walked up and was like, wait, 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 like, do you want to go to the concert? And I was like, yeah, I'd love to. And I like gave him my information. He was like, we'll have you at will call. I said, okay. And I asked him, I was like, can I get a picture with you? He goes, no, I don't do photos. Like really. And I was like, okay, that's, that's Did fine. you go to the concert? I showed up to the concert, called and sick to work. And my name was not on will call. Yeah. So that was the last time I bothered seeing them. I was so sad. I don't want to be that person, but if I ever saw him again, I would say you owe me gas money, homie. Yeah. You, you, you I, owe me gas money. Imagine me getting in my automobile, coming to see I you. Drove, I drove an hour, too. I called in sick. I like I showed up, and I went to both lines. They're like, you're not on here. And I was like, okay. Because I like spelt it and everything. He's like, yeah, just show up to Will Call. You'll have it. I was there for like a half hour trying to figure it out. And they're like, you're not here. I was like, is it because I asked him for a picture? Like, is he hate me? Like, and then I, and then of course the same thing happened with every band from that era. 10 years later, they were all outed for doing <laughs> bad things. And you're like. Some are wo far worse than others. Yeah. Um, I'm, I've met, okay. So I <laughs> met Claudio from Coheed. He's very, I have no horror stories as far as. I'm trying to think. It was soul crushing. I was like 23 well, years old. I, was I don't like, blame you. I would be well, pissed. I don't think I've ever had like a bad run in because I mean, that sounds like some next level, like Oasis, but you're like Noel Gallagher or Liam Gallagher. He like wanted, nothing to, wanted nothing to do with me. The minute I recognized him, he was like, oh, like a fan's here. It's like, bitch, we're at the fucking airport waiting for I'm luggage a, at 11 p.m. I feel like, like when you're mean to them. And I mean this respectfully, or you just, you make eye contact long enough for them to think that you're going to say something to them and then you don't. When I tell you that'll mess with you, I ran into a couple people and you just kind of look at them like you are you, you are who you is, but I don't say nothing to them. They be waving like, nah, I don't have to say hi to you because my fear is if I meet you and you suck, now I don't like you anymore. And like, I've had good uh, run-ins. Like I, I ran into the drummer from Newfound Glory, but we didn't talk. Oh. I just looked at him and I was like, Newfound Glory. And he was like, yeah. And then he did this and I was like this. And then we walked off and that yeah. was it. And that was such a nice moment that I have no beefs with him. Oh yeah, and like uh, it, 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 and it, you can, it, you can tell, like, like what Flannel Fries is saying is that a lot of the people who were outed for being, you know, bad dudes, I mean, it's part of the reason why Warped Her got shut down is because of how much, you know, bad things were happening. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Like anytime it's like I see someone, a list of people getting called out, I'm like, all these, none, I'm not shocked about any of these. And then the ones who are like, this person's actually a good person, like, that makes sense to me. Like, it's just, you. it's just so The ones that I tell. usually think would be pretty chill are the ones that are usually like, what is your deal? And then the ones where I expect them to kind of be meh, they're usually just chilling. So I don't know. I I did I did see the the fall of Warp Tour. I don't know how often you went, but first time I went was in 2003. And it was like amazing. Like uh do you remember like, I wanna say I was three. I was either three or four, but I wanna say it was 2003. you were gonna say I was three. I was three years old at Warp Tour. <laughs> I started young. Um yeah, it was 2000. I remember because from first to last was performing, which is the original Skrillex for you babies out there before Skrillex was Skrillex. He was a 14 year old in a screamo band and lost his voice. And that's why he started DJing. Um, yeah. And like the used was there 30 seconds to Mars is there, but then you also had like flogging Molly, Pennywise, no effects. You had 
literally Pennywise every, and no effects went to everything yeah it was like, every every band from that era you're obsessed with and then i went every year because they had it at the gorge here in washington which is a fuck it's just one of the most beautiful venues ever it's right over the river like so you'd, you'd make a big weekend out of it the last time i went to warp tour i think it was i was 24 years old and it was a god awful experience it just slowly got worse and worse and like the crowds got like meaner and like snobby and like the men got grosser it was like because like i feel like the big emo era you know was like between 2000 and like 2008 and then after that it just kind of started drifting off i remember the last warp tour i had now, a what happened come 2008 yeah. it just died right? off Right after 2000, because the last, I remember the last big band I saw live was A Day to Remember, and I was obsessed with them. And then I remember going to see them, and they had these two other bands opening, and the, and I forgot their names. That's how rememberable they were, but they were god awful, and their crowd was god awful. And so I just care until A Day to Remember went on. And then after that, it's like everything just started slowly disappearing, you know? They got angry after being sad. Yeah, and then and then all the emo kids either got into EDM or or metal music. <laughs> I'm learning that those who left emo, EDM became like a really big thing. And I never, I don't know, I never got into EDM because it's like I, I love rock, and rock is m my favorite genre. I know it is. Um, but I'm also like hip hop, so I also did that. I, I've always been a hip hop head. I just like music in general. I like contemporary jazz. I like jazz fusion. So I, I went to all my, my rock concerts, of course, but I also went to my hip hop ones and I did that. I've seen a lot of contemporary artists, a lot of jazz artists like Brian Culbertson, Jeff Lorber, Dave Weckl. I just like music. So for me, when emo kind of died, I was kind of sad, but there was always something to listen to because on the other side, like, when you had all your emo bands like Thriving, you still had your Breaking Benjamins, your Chevelles, you know. So do, you, do you know the jazz band Foreplay? I've seen them live a few times. I'm not super into jazz, but I, I, if I get invited to a jazz concert, I'll go. I love music. So it's like, yeah. But that yeah. was one. Sorry to interrupt you. Anyways, sorry. I was trying to think because I don't want to play, you know. Yeah, there's there's always a concert to go to. And, and, and with rock, you got so many, you have so many genres, you have options, right? So it's not just, it was like, yes, we lost emo, but we started getting, what is it now? Post-punk. So that kind of happened. So yeah, like, you know, you're Dance Gavin Dance and you're Hell the Sun and, and, and those bands. And so it was like, there was always something. You're Billy Talents and... Yeah, it was just a lot. You, I don't know. I feel like early two thousands, we had so many bands that a lot of great bands didn't get the love they deserved because we had too many options, and then it died out. And I feel like we would, oh, we would kill for some of these bands to come back. Acceptance was lovely, and now they're gone. I truly enjoy Billy Talent. Well, I don't also, know. I think a lot of it too was that you know the only other kind of singers we had that were even were closely relatable to emo was probably like maybe Robert Plant and like 80 singers. And you know, a lot of those people destroyed their vocal cords. Um, and I think, I think the problem with all the emo bands in the early 2000s, you had all these like high school to early twenties kids trying to learn how to sing and then they all destroyed so they can't they can't go back and just hurt scream burt again and ruined it. yeah right? like he's done like he fried his vocal cords he burt mccracked his voice yeah you know? like, <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like we couldn't have that genre last more than a few years because they were destroying their poor tonsils and their vocal cords just trying to do it so yeah it had to like go back to like being like more like alternative rock which is fine like i which love is fair. I listen to a lot of like indie electronic indie music. Like it, that's you know, I just saw Glass Animal we got like, Live. Like okay. I, we got like yeah. a two door cinema clubs and stuff like that. And I'm yeah. here for it, you know. Um I Neck Deep was another one of the newer ones. Like uh what is it? Twenty one pilots. Yeah. Like there's so many, yeah, there's so many good like I enjoy twenty one pilots. I blame them for a lot of things. Not in a bad way. TikTok. It, it was just like Paramore was Paramore and Fall Out Boy and Panic at the Disco, they were all them. And then 21 Pilots happened because it wasn't because of Gym Class Heroes. It wasn't because of the Vines or in Jimmy Eat World. Out of nowhere, it's just well, like just everything sounds dropping. like 21 Pilots. Everyone sounded like 21 Pilots 
Oh yeah, it Why was did like that happened. It was like the Eddie Vedder of this yeah. generation, where it was because like there were other bands like on Eddie Fueled Vedder. by Ramen that were out. That's why I'm like Jimmy Eat World was there, and no one changed their sound to sound like them. No one cared. It was just I don't know. It hurt. And and it's not that I don't like Twenty One Pilots because I promise you I did. I was here since their EP. What was it? Regional at best. I was oh, here, yeah. but then out of nowhere, everyone just started sounding like them. And I was like, while I don't dislike it. I miss when they everyone sounded like themselves. That's all. Yeah, that was like the Eddie Vedder moment where it's like every band, like Stain, Puddle, it's like everyone was like, hey, hey, hey. But and there's like, only <laughs> one Pearl Jam. Like they're doing know. this. Not, I like, and don't Why? I like I like Puddle of Mud. They had like a song and a half, and I will take that from them. And for what it's worth, I think Fuel is a very great band that doesn't get enough love. I like Fuel. That is so funny. I love talking to you. It's hard because it's like I still have like an old school drive through record shirt that I've kept since I was like 14. I never wear it. I just have it because I like I keep it forever. And I busted it out one time and if someone's like, oh, my God, I have not even heard of that. Brand. I'm like, you don't remember that in like Epitaph Records like way back in the day. Oh, my God. It's like also Rise Against. I remember the singer <laughs> Rise Against. He has that one label it's not epitaph he has a new one i think he owns a record label now that really is, okay i didn't yeah, know that a lot of bands that are connected to it but i forgot <sighs> what it was but it's like rise against was like my big thing too back in the day and oh my god so are you going to that fake emo no uh, i'm not going to the emo fire fest. i do see a question though I, I see best song on the tony hawk soundtrack and that's ooh, that's a good one what it's what? not fair but Somebody I, I'm told, taking because it's either CKY. I saw the, the, the other day that, that there is a Tony. There's a cover band that only does Tony Hawk soundtracks. I would go it. see them if the if, if it's not like a bajillion dollars. I would spend an evening. I would do it. Oh, I because the OG did. Tony Hawk soundtracks were amazing with like Rage Against the Machine. Tell oh, you yeah. CKY and Alien Ant Farm. Alien Ant Farm, there was the whole, there's so many, uh, what is that, SR-71, that was another one that was on they, there. I like them. <laughs> Earlier them was not good, but then they came back and they were a little emo and they were much better. You oh, know, and Tony and Hawk put out an album. Yeah, you know Tony Hawk was a singer. I went to the Tony Hawk Boom Boom Hug Jam. Do you remember that? They had that I do show. remember those days. And it was uh the offspring was performing and some 41 and I would be here was, for them. There was another band there that was on it, and I was like, oh man, it was so funny because it was just like like it's like I don't know if you've gone to a monster truck show in the in recent years, but for what, what okay, monster truck beyond is it really just cars crashing or driving on top oh, yeah. of other cars oh, like, that's it right i've never been to one but I, I have an idea of what it is there has to be more to it no my friend okay so my friend's 30th birthday right before covid we went to a monster truck show because we were like what should we do we wanted to, like we all started drinking early and we're like well they have the monster trucks at tacoma and i was like let's fucking go so we went and it's like every child in the audience is like so excited, but literally it's just giant trucks meshing into each other. And I'm like, this is hilarious. It was totally worth it when you were drunk. But then I imagine what my parents felt like when I went to Boom Boom Huck Jam. They're just watching like all these skateboarders and these BMX bikers. And we're just like a bunch of 12 year olds like screaming. I was like, oh my God, this is exactly how my parents felt like when they took me there. Um, you know, it's one of those, if you know, you know, and if it's your thing, if you get it, then you got it. And if you don't, you're like, what is this? What am I doing? That's fair. Oh my God. I fucking miss, oh, I miss those concerts so much. In sixth grade, I skipped sixth grade camp to go to the Pop Disaster Tour 2001, which was uh, Blink-182, Green Day, and Jimmy Eat World. That was my shit back in the day. I still have the program for it. I'll have to bust well, it out. You have out to keep all it. your stuff, you know, because then you can look back and say, you remember that one time? Also, when, I'm when pretty I did sure that? it's worth money at this point. Like, it's in mint condition. Would you sell it, though? No. no. Oh, okay. I was just like, no. I wouldn't sell. I Like, same thing with my drive through record shirt. And my, and my, I have two Blink-22 tour shirts that I've never gotten rid of that are, like, completely destroyed. I have the original Famous Stars and Straps logo that has, like, that kind of like that tattoo-y looking I have logo. a famous belt buckle somewhere that I'm not proud to say I own, but 
I feel I like own- Avril had a hold on me for just a little while, and I don't <laughs> want to talk about it, and that's very fair. Are you going to the emo fire fest? Because no. I know it's not going to be good. I know, know. it's not. Uh, us Warped Preventer runs are like three stages in the middle of the desert, and like by the time I get my seven dollar bottle of water, I'm gonna miss like fifteen bands. Like. Sounds There's awful. too many stages, and I, I'm convinced they were just placating and telling people what they wanted to hear. And then it was like a red flag because bands were like responding, like, "Where am I playing? I have a show. Where? I didn't sign up for this. Like, wait, am I playing here? Like, that's very scary." We were trying to get tickets, and then they were like, "Tickets are sold out." So we added a second date. I'm like, "Oh, so you just added a second date in a second without notifying anyone?" It just, yeah, it seems like a scam. I'm sure if it happens. We're going to hear horror stories. There's no way it's going to go good. But like, too, I, we'd have to make too many choices. And I would rather see no one than to have to make the choice and just see some people. That would kind of hurt me a little more. So because it's like you can't ask me to choose between like Taking Back Sunday or My Chemical Romance. And I'm probably going to go see Taking Back Sunday. But it's like you have all these stages. I'm like, there's no way I'm doing that because I'm just going to be upset wherever I end up thinking about the concert that got away. So I'm good. We're 20 years old. Like we can't just, we don't have the energy to do that. I saw Kohe last week and my, I was like, oh, that pit, the pit was hot. It, it was unbelievably hot. And I was there and it was a good show. It was a good time. But I'm like, dude, I'm getting old, man. I, this life ain't gonna know me for too much longer. But I'm gonna go while, while I'm still like, I can fit it. There we go. Voice of emo music. I should have worn my, I don't know if you knew this, but I have a whole collection of Atticus t-shirts. Remember Atticus? I, they only ship them out of Europe and I own six shirts. They still exist? They still exist only oh, wow. in Europe. So I paid $30. Oh, that's shipping though. Yeah, Christmas. I was about to say that shipping. That's why I had an order like five. I had to justify it. So it was like $5 a piece. But yeah, I have a bunch of Atticus shirts and I like wear them. I have a couple comedy reels where I'm like wearing them. People are like, oh my God, is that Atticus? I haven't seen that in so long. I was like, I told you, man, the minute I found my fucking iPod, I went right through my my emo phase all over again. I just feel like that's a slippery slope. There are moments where if I hear something from like long ago, because it's not like you hear the songs. It's like now you have like the memories and you're like, oh, that was a time. And I just feel like to pull out an iPod and just see what you were listening to way back in the day. It's It's like wild. Cringe. I love it. Like there's some stuff on there that I'm like, oh, my God, like I totally forgot about these bands and other things like what the hell was I doing? Because. Sometimes you'll go back and listen to that music and you'll be like, I can't believe I was crying over these guys. And like some of them, like since Screamo was so big, you just assumed every person in, that was in that band knew how to scream. And then you listen to some of them, like they literally sound like they're strangling a cat. Like why was, and then the lyrics are so like. You gotta question your younger self. Like what were we doing and back my then? Eyes. And I'm like, these lyrics are so gross because they're like children. It's like, why are these 17 year old Wait a minute. Don't do Ohio though, because I I still like Hawthorne Heights. I I don't do this. I still have that I'm song on my spot. Outside of your window with, with my, my radio. radio. <laughs> no, don't do this you, because you killed me. No, it's I still the, really good. Now I saw my dragging the late compilations too. No, Am I too old for some of these songs? Absolutely. Have some of the bands that I thought were really, really cool aged, and now it's weird. I saw Simple Plan doing something recently, and I don't know, hearing this grown man say, I'm just a kid, and you're singing like you're, some of these songs didn't age well. So Simple Plan is going to have a tough time. Nightmare. Right? Like, I don't believe you. You're 40. This don't work no more. And that's very fair. My favorite one is like the, have you seen the Panic of the Disco meme? Where they like post the lyrics, like that really like sexual song they made, and they had a picture of what they look like, and they were like literally eighteen year old boys t- singing about sex. I'm like, you don't even know what you're doing. Why are you making these lyrics? They Your hurt child. from friends, Lisa. Apparently, this is how it works, and oh. they, you know they they just heard. Our, I don't my know. Old, my old screen name, like on Live Journal and Open Diary, was Midnight Eyes because of the fucking afi song like mine was my jaw of glass and i'm not proud of this and it i imagine like we were making a actually we were making this joke at evo because like one of our creators name is fear itself justin i mean but like that was his name when he was competing in halo he's had it since he was 14 which is fine that is a great gamer handle i think it's a little edgy and cringe because he's like 30 you know whatever now but it's like he made that when he was 14 i'm like 
you know what? You're lucky that you got big and that was the handle you had. Because if I got big when I was 14, I had my handle, I would be midnight eyes for the rest of my life. That, that like, actually would have been pretty cool. Because if you knew, if you know, Anime Blink-182 no. girl. Like, it's like all my Okay, animals. that wouldn't have hit the same. But like midnight eyes, that would have worked. Because that means AFI, fan. people still like AFI. It was like XXX, midnight eyes, XX. You, you had to have like the, the little X and then the big X and then the little X. You had to have all the X's. And to this day, I forget that's a thing. And so whenever people come in chat and they have X's in their name, I try to sound out the X. Like there's X a there's, <laughs> there's someone in my community and I called them Zeppelfax for ye like the better part of a year. Their name is Evo Alpha. But there's like an X and then an X at the end and it looks like Zeppelfax. And I was like, but you know, they never told me. And so I'm like, when when what happened was my husband was streaming with me and he was like that says evo alpha and i was like are you kidding me and so i'm like evo why did you let me call you that for the better part of a year and he says like, i don't know you were really cool so i didn't trip i'm the only per i forgot that people used to put numbers in their name so we have like a database but it was like d4 t4 and i called them d4 for months people, because i take everything literally i, I just take I'm everything terrible. literally now I forgot that people still do the uh what is it called like the meme names the aim names the aim names from back in the day i get it all the time because i still have my following alerts up so anytime someone follows me i try to like say the name and i just sometimes just fucking give up i'd be like thank you for following me <laughs> it's like when i raid someone's channel and i get it now because my name is fucking wisa lolin i fucking i hate that that is my name on here but i didn't expect to stream and i Lisa was taken. Now I'm called Weasel. <laughs> so it's, I get it. And I don't get offended, but I always feel bad. Like when it's like, yeah, you add X's and numbers and little emojis. I just, you, you know, I usually I'm like, my bad. Remember me different. We're still friends. You know, you little get balls, one pass. Um, cats. You know, back in the day, I had so many bad names because like I kept going through different phases, but every single one of them was like the most emo lyric ever and i'm just like god i'm so glad i never became a big gamer when i was 14 because i do not want to be called emo lyrics for the rest of my life but if you guys want to call me lisa miss murder you're more than welcome to so it's okay that's what you said in the chat lisa miss murder miss lisa murder there you go yeah if i try to pronounce your name i get it wrong just don't get mad at me that's the rule i just like my bad and then you start smiling and then you know it is, um, it is very funny when Twitch people come out to my comedy shows and introduce me as their Twitch names and not their real names. Because then it's like, yeah, I'm not going to know you by your real name. But I I was like, yeah, in their defense, you wouldn't know who they are, right? I also don't want to call you by your like biggest geek ever always comes to my comedy shows. I go, hey, thank you, biggest geek ever for coming to my show. BGE, what's up in the chat? There you go. I still call you Cuppa. Cuppa Noodle. Well, that's the only time I'm going to answer. Like. No one's allowed to call you that but me. Only I can Deal. Kappa, kappa, kappa noodle. I was saying that on the phone. We met up. I mean, everyone. You're, I mean, my community knows who Ify is, but Ify came out on, on one of the nights that we were there, and we all hung out, and I was just like, I'm hanging out with Kappa, Kappa noodle. <laughs> I will say, I am very envious that you live in where you live because you are in a great place to see so many great artists and music like i'm i'm oh. learning there's always something going on and i forgot that there was always something so i, I am happy about that but even then it's like at this point because i'm lazy it's like such and such is playing right and i'm like but i don't feel like it but like if you can get me to go i have so much fun and i'm happy i went but like literally when i first moved back to la my friend was like, Limp Biscuits coming out here. And I'm like, chocolate starfish, hot dog flavored water. I'll do it, right? It's literally the day. Because I feel I, like that is not a safe concert to go to. No, but I, I don't, I never seen Fred. I was like, you know, for what it's worth, Limp Biscuit had a very brief moment and I'll give them that. But I was lazy. I was like, dude, I don't want to go. I just moved. And now I'm really sad because it was a free concert. I really should have went and I did that. So it's like... If I'm lazy, as long as I'm not being lazy, like if I can get there, then it's fun, but I'm lazy. One of my favorite comedians, Mark Maron, has a great joke about when he went to go see the Rolling Stones live because like they're all like 70, like they should not be performing. He was like, the best part of the concert is we left 
before the encore and we got to avoid all the traffic. <laughs> like, yep, that's that's the thing about concerts. Like, I'm like, I don't want to sit in traffic. I don't I can't stand for that long. But oh, man, do I miss it? The problem you just is they're kind of making your way like, oh, it's almost over. It's let me just make my way. Concerts are just so expensive here. It's like hard for me to justify going. But uh, like if I do a show at Croc at the Crocodile, they'll always have like an emo band playing upstairs now. So I always try to get weekends there and see what they're doing. Last time I was there, they had a Taylor Swift DJ, which was very interesting. They had a Most DJ random playing- thing I've heard all day. Taylor, okay. It was so funny that a DJ playing Taylor Swift music and I like walked in. It was just a bunch of drunk 30 year old women crying and like dancing with each other. And I was like, this, you know, I've never been a Swifty in my life, but I have such respect. Is that what, the, is that what it's called? When, when called you were Swifties. T- really? Did not know that. Okay. Learned something new. I was never a Swifty. I was never in a Taylor Swift. To me, Taylor Swift is like Harry Potter. I just managed to avoid that. I, there's nothing, I have nothing against it. Maybe JK Rowling, but nothing against the story. So it's like, you know, I kind of skipped that era. So when I meet people who are super into them, I'm like, Oh no, Taylor Swift oh, never like happened for me. Uh, most things never happen. I don't know why. It's not emo Taylor Swift cover band would be incredible. I remember <sighs> Pop Goes Punk. Or Pop I Goes like Pop. a good rock rap remix. I like them very much. Um, I feel like Newfound Glory doesn't get enough credit because they were like the first ones to get all those covers going. Like that was their thing for a very long time. If you name it, they did like a cover for Juvenile, back that thing up. And it was like the biggest deal to me because like I finally learned the words and I was like, oh my goodness, this is cool. But to this day, like I try to argue, like every now and then when I find them, I show chat and they're like, I need you to be better. But I'm like, rock. The gimme gimme's? Oh my God. Pop goes punk is really good and anything that you can do acoustically like if your song sounds good acoustically and it's like stripped down to nothing and it's still great that's how you know it's an amazing song i'm like you don't have any bells and whistles but this song is just a beautiful song i love it here goldfinger did 99 red balloons too i saw the most interesting concert here we had a we have a amusement park called wild waves it used to be six flags but it sucks so much that they don't they don't associate them with, with anymore. But one time the Vines and Goldfinger performed there right outside of a roller coaster. And then I got to go on a roller coaster with the singer from the Vines. And I was like 11. And it was the weirdest concert I've ever been to. But it was great. God, I miss random concerts so bad. Anyways, I don't get these anymore. We've literally been talking about music for like an hour. I love Okay, it. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I love it. I'm <laughs> sorry. Love it. I do not apologize. I do not get to have these conversations with people very often. Like all the people that I was really good friends with, like during those time in my life, I don't I don't talk to them anymore. I kind of drifted off. I had like a whole group I used to party with that worked for every year. We we're all from different cities and they've all married, moved on to other the places in the US. Like I don't have that connection. So like when when I say like, oh yeah, I have this emo playlist, people are like, Can I see what's on it? I'm like, are you serious? Or are you trolling me? Is this my moment? This is my I, moment. I've I been know, waiting for this. I know the emo aesthetic is really big now, like like as far as like dressing that way. But I was like, it was not when we were in high school. That's for sure. I was not cool when I had my big fucking flower in my hair and like my spiky back of my head was all spiked. I had the long hair in the front. I had like the guy emo haircut, like thought the girl really? one. Not the girls one with the big hair. I was like long See, in the front. I only had the seen back. hair. I, I cause I was all I, I was a skater, so I, I I was more of a Dickies, maybe just a t-shirt, maybe just like a tank top. I was very simple, but you know, I cared about my shoes. So like DVSs, Etnies, DCs. I was here for all of those. I had Osiris's, but I can see why Os- those were like the the thickest shoes I've ever oh, yeah. seen. Like Osiris has made your feet look fifteen times bigger and Old wider. Skate shoes were like yeah. the shit. The CC what is it? CCS magazine. Yeah. So totally. like I, I never had the emo aesthetic. Like I I I I know like we had like the goth. We had emo. I did like see hair. Skater I, girl. Skater yeah, girl I was more. It. I was just there. So I was just all dickies, or I get a pair of dickies and cut them into shorts. I would shorts, be intimidated you know. by you. I was all like, I had shirts with emo lyrics. I had like chains, parachute pants from Hot Topic. I was, I was disgusting. 
Uh, and he looked just as hot. Like there were so many layers and buckles oh, yeah. on. I have. Everything. I would wear. I would wear double, three layered, st like studded belts, like the big thick. And you ones. belt after belt after belt, and you had to just all of them. Skinny jeans with like zippers all over them. I was a mess. I had. Uh, I had the sweatbands. I had like the. Yeah, I, I did have the little sweatbands, and I had to remember those rubber bracelets, and you can oh, like. Yeah. You and just you have, can, like, they're all the way up. up your arm for no reason. You you have to wear 90 at one time. I, uh, it had to be a sleeve. My parents didn't have a lot of money. And so all my money would go to accessories. And then I would just like make or like wear the same outfit and just, just change out my accessories. Because every time I go back to school shopping and give us a budget, I'd be like, oh, I just want more bracelets. I just want more jewelry. And I don't wear any of that shit. So I'm like, well, that was a waste of money for those years. But now I'm getting back into it. I just bought like a chain for my. Pa I'm like, I'm going. I'm. I'm, well, I'm going to get you up. safety pins because you got to oh, put yeah. safety pins in everything. And then you cut it and then you put safety pins to bring it back together because that's how you know you're doing it right. I'm going to I'm just going to get you all the safety say, pins. The dumbest fashion idea slash choice I had. And I you know what? It was stupid, but I'm going to defend it. I used to be in Campfire Girls like Girl Scouts, but it was called Campfire Girls. I don't know if you remember that, but we used to have blue vests like these blue vests that we put like our little beads in it. Well, when I was in seventh grade, I took off all the beads and put on band patches on there. Like of like all the bands I wore. So I wore like my fucking Girl Scout vest covered in band patches. <laughs> Like it was fashionable. That's very I edgy of you. I, I feel like every because I had a, I had my jean jacket. You know your jacket. Yeah, the that Avril Lavigne but, aesthetic. I didn't not completely because arm warmers were not really my gig. Do you wear but, ties though? I, shit. Why would uh, I own a tie? All right, I I, I may have owned. Tie. And I the thing is, now that ties. I look back okay. on it, it's like tank top. The tie, there's no collar. It's just a tie. We look like little rascals. What were we doing? Now that I look back on it, I don't want, and Avril absolutely ordinary. got me. I, we, I will be woman enough to say, Avril had me for her. one album, maybe an album and a half. And I, under, shout out to Fifi Dobson, because I, I really just liked all of them. I like Michelle Branch. I still like Vanessa Carlton. I was here for all of them. Now, Lindsay Lohan, no, but I do remember coming clean. I'm no liar. No, that's Hillary Duff. Lindsay Lohan had something, but I don't remember what. I wasn't really here for them, but I, I, I had a moment with Avril. Do you remember the sounds? I do remember this. Sound. Yes. Was all about the girl singers. That was a time where female singers, they all played instruments, right? Except for Avril didn't. Like, she half played. It was cute. Oh, I, was, I hated Avril. I was like, you are stealing everything. I, for what it's worth, early <laughs> Avril, I, I didn't I hate she her. Was just, she was just an innocent Canadian girl making music, but I was so jealous of her. I was like, no. And then Avril made that hot. switch. No. <laughs> Avril was cool, but then Avril started kind of being mean to everyone else, like, get like me, and I'm like, okay, yeah. you're doing this. But it was just a time where everyone played an instrument, and I yeah. thought that was very cool. It was adorable. I really miss those days. You and I will have to, like, we'll have to go to a concert and cry together. We'll figure out which one. I'm going to start looking. We um, should make a tier list together. So oh, we can try to oh, my God. I really, I'm going to share you my, my playlist too, because there's a lot of good shit on there. You'll probably, I think I might have showed it to you. My emo playlist, we're in emo. No, I didn't get to see it. Oh, I'll, I'm going to send it to you. It's, you'll love it. It's called, Am I Sad or Am I Angsty? <laughs> because I couldn't think of a title. Um, wow. Well, I knew we were going to talk about music for a while. I know we're going to talk about a whole hour, because I still have questions about your stream. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> I, that's I fair. Okay. I'm curious more on, for me personally, uh, because like I, you know, I feel like now that I'm like a little over two years in and I just had like a subathon and, and I have all these ideas for like content, it, I'm kind of starting to shape like what things like make me really happy. What was the big part? What was the big thing in your stream that kind of like blew up for you? Like, what was that? What were you doing? Like where you're like, because at first you're just doing it for fun, but then you're like, oh, wow, like I people really like my content and paying for this like this is my job now like what what were what was going on when that all happened for you i don't know it, it was like okay so if i remember correctly because i worked full time and i was also hosting so i could build up my demo reel but it was like kind of a perfect storm so i remember streaming and i 
I don't remember like my numbers or my metrics because I, I just don't. I, I never kept up with them. I still don't. But I just remember it was a perfect storm where I did a hosting summit for Twitch. And so that following year, they had asked me if I wanted to do something for their Unity Month. So that was like my first front page ever. And I had never done it. And I didn't really know what to expect. And then literally I did a scare for St. Jude like the next day. And then that Monday was a holiday. So I started streaming really early. Well, I streamed earlier than I normally would because I would usually stream at like four, like five or 6 p.m. because I had to come home from work, right? So it's like I started streaming at noon because that's when the front page was. So I was like, I'm just going to do it again. But for whatever reason, people came back. And I don't know why people came back. And I'm not saying it was a bunch of people. It was just enough people for me to say, oh, I think I can do this. And I always felt bad because my community was kind of predominantly East Coasters and I'm in LA. Well, you know, I'm in Cali. So it was like six o'clock for me was like nine o'clock for them. So it was always like super late. So I just remember, I, I don't know. I can't pinpoint what happened. I don't know if anyone truly can. I think you have moments when you first start where you feel like I'm doing this and you have like a really good day and you're like, I got this. And then you get humbled like immediately when life says, no, you don't. And then you feel like you had the yeah. worst stream ever. Like it low key just happened. But I remember having a moment where I just stopped and said, I don't even know if it was a matter of I can do it as much as this is what I want to do. And so I just told my husband, like, I want to do this. And was, he was it like, a specific well, game, maybe? Because, like, it's like, because, like, mine is always, like, so, like, up and down, depending on what I'm playing. And then it's, like, I know in my head, I'm, like, if I kept playing this one game, like, back when I first started, I almost made, like, the partner numbers. I'm, like, if I just kept playing this game, I could have made it. But I was, like, no, don't turn Do what you want to do. That's fair. Yeah. Um, no, You know, the big turning point for me was, and when I first started, and if my community is still here, because I know it's late, uh, and if they were here for this, they've been in my community for a long time. I think it was, this is before just chatting, all right? Just chatting is a very, it's normal. Everyone does just chatting. But there used to be a time where it was kind of rare, and this was before just chatting actually existed in the directory. And only a handful of streamers I could think of at the time did it. Shout out to that bronze girl, because I know she did too. You see and, um, yeah. And um, you would just sit and talk to your community before you play a game. Because when back there used to be a time on Twitch where you would go live. And as soon as you're live, you are in the game. You go straight to the game. And there are absolutely people who still stream like that to this day, right? This I is can't. before just starting screen or starting soon screens and any of that. And I remember there was a time when I would just go live. And as soon as I go live, I would go straight to the game. And that was it. Like, I didn't talk. But then I remember, like, I just started talking. Like, how are y'all doing? And I didn't have a layout or anything. So I'm, like, this big because, you know, your game is full screen and you're, like, a little blip in the screen. And we ended up just sitting and talking. And it was like we would just sit and talk at the beginning of stream. And I really enjoyed that. And at the time, it was very rare. And people would come in and they would be like, so are you going to play the game or what? And it's like, Shut up, like, <laughs> you know, I'll, you know, and I would just be like, nah, I, I was. And then you asked me, so now I'm not. So then I ended up making a layout for it, but it was like super rare. And if I'm being honest, there's only a handful of careers I can think that was actually doing that at that time. And then to go even further and like, just make a layout. And now we see this, like, it's no different than what we're doing now. And you just have a layout that was made for you to just sit and talk. And that just kind of became oh, yeah. our thing. And you just, you sit and you talk. Cause like, I'm a very, bronze is one of my favorite streamers. And so I thought I was crazy and I'm like, well, no, I'm, I don't think I am, you know? Cause I learned a lot just watching other creators. And it's like one thing that I truly learned is you got to do what you want and what makes you happy. So I was like, I enjoy talking to my community. I like, cause that means I get to know everybody. Right. And it's more Please. than it being about me. I don't really like things being about me which sounds stupid and probably a lie oh, because as a content creator, that. we're all narcissists, <laughs> right? As a content creator, we are all narcissists to us. To, uh, I don't care. Some are bigger than others, but we are all narcissists because we believe that people care enough to tune in and watch a stream. And I get that. But in saying that, I really don't. Like, you want to see me uncomfortable? Talk to me about myself. And it's kind of like, okay, thank you. But 
I don't know. I like getting to know everyone else. Um, that way I have dirt on them mostly because they know all my problems and all my traumas. No, they have all my, you know, they know about me getting it wrong in high school, but I don't know nothing about them. So I like getting to know them because that means when they judge me, I can judge them too. And it's just really cool because you get to learn a lot and you learn that you're more, you have more common ground with people than you think. And you don't have to go to the same school or grow up in the same city or same state to have common, you know, interests and things with people. So, you know, I, I'm seeing chat. Yes, I know stuff about all of y'all. Y'all aren't slick. I, I won't a, tell she today. She has a death note. She has a death I, note with everything. She just got to write your name down and then it's all, it's doomed for you guys. No, it was, I mean, like me, I had to go from like having a live audience for comedy to having this. And that was a weird, weird transition. Like, like, you should tell a joke on stream. I'm like, everything I say is funny. But does transitioning from like live stand up, I feel like streaming would be a walk in the park because you don't see anyone's faces. Like whenever you do something in a live setting, you just see eyeballs staring at you. Like, Watching me stream. Yes. So, so I feel like that, this had to be like a, a cakewalk for you. No, I mean, I think because I don't know when to stop talking. Yeah. <laughs> like I could just keep I, talking. Like I that's will never. So I think that was it for me, but I like the transition from like, oh, like, I don't know how you guys, I mean, I always read off of other people's energy. Like, that's how I got good at talking. So then I had to learn like, you know, cause my first started streaming, you know, I didn't have 70 viewers, you know, I, I didn't have like a lot of people actively responding. So I was like, I guess I'll just keep uh, talking about the game. Just talk to and yourself. Then, yeah. And you just keep talking and then eventually oh, someone podcast. answers and then you're kind of like oh my god someone's listening to me wait a minute like hi hello you know I, yeah i was i mean i was really lucky like i didn't have you know there's people who start out and they only get like you know two or three viewers like when i started out i think my first stream had 18 which wasn't bad because like i already had like a a, a, a podcast and i already had like a like a twitter following but like that, that's not the same for a lot of comedians. Like they didn't, a lot of comedians don't build their platforms. They just care about getting bookings. Like that's why TikTok and Reel are huge now because they're like, well, we, we realize we have to have something else. But like yeah. I realized that earlier. I was like, oh, I've been, I've, I've been building my brand for years because I wasn't getting booked for shows. I was just tweeting anime memes all day. Um, and so yeah, like I see other comedians, they'll stream and they'll be like, oh, I just, I can't do it. Like I have to know if people are listening. I have to like. That's the thing about streaming is just you're just hanging out. Like the best thing about streaming versus comedy is at least if you're if you're bombing on stage in comedy, you're bombing on stage in comedy. But if you're bombing on stream, just play the video game. Like you have a video game on stage, with which sounds simple, but it hits. A, I don't know. So when I first like, I've never done anything before, like Twitch. I haven't even Twitch. had to do a giveaway stream. I, oh, I will be event. I, I have nothing to give away. <laughs> Lisa, when you One first day. start streaming and you come from no background, like you don't have a following and it's not like you're able to pull people from another something here. I don't know. It, it one, you don't know what you're doing. So you're kind of like, I don't know, but you're genuinely alone. Like you're, you're literally, so I get, I get it. Like, I feel like there's definitely a difference when it comes to like a live setting, but something about you sitting by yourself. And you know there's supposed to be like some unwritten goal. And I think the longer you stream, the less you kind of care about a lot of these things. But when you first start, you're kind of like looking at the viewer like count. It's like everything I'm doing. Yes. And there's something to be said about zero. And then it says one. And then you say something and you're talking and it says one. And I think what used to drive me crazy is I would go from zero to one. But the one would never say anything in chat. So for all I know, I don't know. It, it could have been a bot. Okay. It could have been just AFK. They could have just been watching. But you see it, but you're like, well, who is it? Oh, my God. And as you continue and you start meeting people, like, that's huge. But I think you it's, built yeah. platforms before you even started streaming. But that feeling of building something and starting from I zero. Mean, I'm, yeah, I'm still building. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, I, like, yeah. Like, I just got partnered a few months ago, which I realized means nothing. So it's like, I'm still building my, like, Welcome. it doesn't mean anything. Like, it's just like, cool, I have a check mark, but it doesn't, didn't make my stream blow up. It didn't change how people view me at all. Um, so yeah, I'm still building that stream. I think everyone's still building the platform. That's why I'm like trying on their streams and stuff. 
um like the gun plot like now my chat keeps making fun of me for doing gun plots like i did a lego stream a while ago and i loved it so i bought like a model kit of like a, a mecca from an anime and i loved it now i'm like you guys are gonna be fucking addicted to gun plot i don't need this i have way too many games i need to play you know do you ever feel like you ever run out of games to play like is that ever a thing for you yeah but our I, we, we play a lot of games so i, I think like in a year we hit like triple digits. We play a lot. So like, cause the goal is you play the game, you beat the game and, it, and then you go on to the next game. But there are moments where, cause back in the day it was fine because backlog, but at this point there really isn't. So it's kind of like, what am I going to do? But I play a lot of indie games. So because of, there's always something to do. And then I have like my win in doubt. So I have like a DVD. I love seven days to die. Um, oh, you love, I'm terrified of horror games. You know, there's always something to be played. I play when in doubt, if chat will let me, I'll replay GTAs because I really like GTA. Vice City is my favorite. So it's like, it's been a while. Can I play Vice City for the 3000th time? But then you have to play all the GTAs. I, You know, I was debating playing all the Tomb Raiders just because I haven't played since like PlayStation. And up, like I have, I would love to replay all the Tomb Raiders and see if there's, if I, one, remember where I'm going and two, if it's still a great time. I, um, I mean, there's a lot of games I want to, I have my backlog's massive. Like I said, like I'm just now getting to other franchises and stuff, but I feel like I, I feel like me now mixing in other things will help me like feel like, oh, I have to rush through things. Cause I, I feel like I burnt myself out when I was like, I have to play all the Yakuza games. And then I was like. This is the same shit every day. <laughs> this is different graphics and different cutscenes. And so I was like, I don't want to get burnt out. Like, I don't want to. And so, yeah, that's like, I, I see streamers who like just play like their one game. And I get it if you're like, you know, like really good at it or if you're like sponsored or, or competing. But besides that, I'm like, oh, I cannot play just one game continuously. That's fair. Like, I just, I can't. Like, I try to do like two or three games. A week. I was, when I first started streaming, every night I played a different game. It was like four days a week I was playing four different games and they were all long games and trying to play four long games at once was like, what am well, I Well, now you have to remember what you were doing, which is why I play the game and then I beat the game because if not, I'm going to be like, what were we doing? So I at least okay. beat it. And then if we can go play something else and if we want to play the second one, then we can come back, you know, so maybe just going in between games because like there's a simplicity to just playing one game. And it messes game. up your controls, as you're yeah. saying, because you're like, uh, I, this is not the button what? I remember. Well... One, depending on the game, you get that game hands. Does that make sense? So yeah. it's like when you play one game, it's like I have God of War hands and then you go play Vice City and everything's like inverted. And now I have, you know, Tommy Versetti hands. So whenever you switch games, I'm like, and for me, it's like sometimes it's PlayStation or sometimes it's mouse and keyboard or I'll grab my freak. I'm still using a 360 Switch. control. You know, I, 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 I love my controller for PC. I don't blame you. See, the Switch is tough because I use that one the least. So it's like, you got to give me a little while to update my hands because I'm not used to this anymore because we sat here for the past two weeks and we just played this game. So, you know, I you have to update your hands. They all have a different A button. Why does an A button have to be different on every controller? <laughs> because like they want to swear that they're different. Like, we're not all playing all the same things. And the only thing that kills me is between, like, Xbox and Microsoft. Like, they both have X, but they're in different places. So, like, that's what will catch me slipping. I'll be like, X for, is what you... Forget, I forget what shape. I was like, what's a triangle look like? I Is that a circle? I don't... I don't... Why are there shapes? I, I like, see, I'm color. good with that. I just feel like the X should have been in the same. So like on PlayStation, the X is on the bottom of the D-pad. It's the lower part. And then I want to say Xbox is on the left side. So that'll like run me a fade when you play a new game because I'm like, they moved my X. So once I get used to it again, I'm good. When but I it's play, just like, I hate that. When I play the Switch controller on any PC game, it automatically reads as an Xbox controller. So you have to figure out what the configuration is between an Xbox and a Switch before messing with it. It's a nightmare. I have an Xbox controller, but I just like, I'm just so used to not using one. I had an Xbox for like two months of my life. I lived with my, my sister and her now husband, and it was right when Skyrim came out. We had to live in a hotel because our like, our apartment flooded. It was not bad. But for like six months, we were going to drive each other crazy. So we, we, we played Xbox and played Skyrim all the time. And I was like, I can't do this. Like, 
Skyward Sword came out the same time. So not only is messing up my controls, it's messing up the name of games that I was Skyward playing. Sword was motion control too, right? Oh, uh, yes. Even though that's I love what, it, yeah. Game, and I'm an apologist. I love that game so you, much. But even Skyward, though they, there's yeah. no way you, Skyward. Mm, I never I did it. I, that's the probably. They well, I didn't do Breath of the Wild, it, and I. I didn't do it because I was too late and I was playing other games and I didn't want to stream Breath of the Wild because I wanted to enjoy it because Zelda's one of my favorites. So I was like, I don't want that. Like it's for me. And then it just never happened. But Skyward Sword was a choice because that motion control, I used to watch my nephew and he'd be playing and he's like working up a whole sweat, just nunchucking and karate kicking for Skyward Sword. And I was like, oh, that looks like a workout. I, that was a choice. I did not. And I something don't... about Link, Link looked weird to me in Skyward Sword. Like, why'd they do that? I, had that I don't know. Style. I like the painted style. Like, his I'm... face looked different. I, I'm surprised mm. you didn't do Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild's pretty chill, but it's really I got it on the Wii it. U, and then I opened it, which I rarely do. Like, if I open a game, it's because I'm beating it. But I opened it, didn't play it, and then I got a Switch, and then it came out on the Switch. So I was like, I'm going to wait. And then I didn't want to stream it because by then people had already played it. And since this was like the first Zelda where you can do whatever you wanted, like I could boot up and just go fight Ganon. I didn't want to have a bunch of people yelling at me. Plus I was newer to streaming. So it was like, I don't want backseating. Now I really don't think about those things. I just, I'll yell at you if you talk to me and that's fine. But because of that, I was I like, I probably, you know, I, when I, Back in the day, I used to overthink these things. And I'm like, they're just going to backseat and I don't know what to do. So I never freaking played it. And I, I'm really sad because I hear Breath of the Wild is really, really good. And I played Hyrule Warriors. I, I played all say, of the, you know, I did that. It's definitely worth it. But like, I mean, to me, it's an amazing game, but it's definitely not my favorite Zelda. So like my favorite Zelda is going to be Twilight Princess, Wind Waker, A Link to the Past. It's probably going to be Link to the Past. It's between, okay, younger me is going to say Ocarina. Older me is going to say Majora's Mask. And for what it's worth, A Link Between Worlds was really, really was good. It was so good. It was just so yes. I love that they had the low roll theme. It was just the high roll theme backwards. They always do crazy things like that with music. Did you know that? Well, with Zelda? Yeah, that the low rural castle theme and Link Between Worlds is a high rural castle theme. Backwards. Well, yeah, because it remember yeah. they go back and forth, so they kind of just they flip they yeah. flip them. The kind of like Paper Mario. They like yeah. that. What is it? The underwear or the something? Ba the Ballad of the Goddesses. Too, yeah, Lord is Zelda's lullaby. It's the oh God. This is a man. You uh, the, uh, Koji Kondo, but also you are just you're so cool. As are you. And <laughs> I'm happy we got that? to do this. Can I just say that you are just, you're just so fucking cool. Like, I knew you were going to be cool. Like, Taylor has great taste in people, you know. It's true. But I was like, I was not fathoming the, the, the level of cool that you were going to be. And you're very cool. Like, I would, I'm really curious to see how you look like in your emo days when you were younger. Like, if you have, if I can picture, find you a picture next time I go to my parents, I'll see if I can steal one. I'm not proud and I don't want to talk about it. I will show you and only you. Only, I, only you know, only. I have, so I think I get, cause I, I believe they still have pictures and I don't know where none of my stuff is because I put stuff in boxes when I moved in here. So if I can find you one, I got you. I will, I, I will find you a picture of younger, edgy me, you know? Younger. Young, younger, ed, younger, edgy cup, cuppa, cuppa noodle. How did you come yes. up with cuppa noodle, by the way? I think I asked you that by. I, I promise it's not fancy. I had another anime based name, and I want to say it was from this one anime called Gare Zero, but it's originally Gare or something, and I, it was her name. And whenever I would play like Mario Kart or like a fighter with my brother, he would call me cup and noodle to be disrespect disrespectful and I would get in my feelings because it worked so come about like I want to say Xbox One PS4 was it no yeah I changed it to cup and noodle and I only did that so he couldn't make fun of me and then it just stuck and then I started streaming and I was like well I'm just going to use my gamer tag because at the time you couldn't change your play, your um, PlayStation gamer tag and I didn't want to have a bunch of different names but For cup you. of noodle was it had underscores you my, the, my, you're you're like an adorable little cup of noodle I love it it has <laughs> underscores and I hate that and I never changed it 
And I'm convinced at this point because I never changed my PlayStation. I think someone stole my gamer tag on PlayStation because I never got it when you could change it. So now I think it's gone. So I'm just going to be oh. Forever Cup with underscores. And that's fair. It's okay. I love I love it. I think it's adorable. Um, what, oh, Sorry, my cat just... I have a bunch of cats. I have too many cats. I and saw them because you FaceTimed them oh, at Eva. <laughs> yeah, I, I did FaceTime my cats while we were doing interviews at Evo. That was very fun. Um, yeah, they just they just all over the place. And anytime I'm streaming, they just wrap around my feet. And so every once in a while, I'll just like get startled because they'll just touch me. Um, but that's no big deal. But that's adorable. I like Cup of Noodle. And we didn't even talk about the anime part. I didn't even ask you about anime and stuff. We just got so caught up in the music part, which is like, it's fine. We have so many things to talk about. And we're going to because we're eventually going to see each other again. I don't know. This is true. When you're gonna Hopefully come. sooner than later. Yeah, well, I know you'll be coming to Seattle at some point for content. I always go to L.A. We'll cross paths. We'll try to find a concert to go to. Maybe we will go out and we'll just, like, redo our, like, emo, our emo, like, our emo fashion days. We'll I was about to say, up. fashion works. I don't know if we can relive the lifestyle. I have old knees. I don't know if I'm built for that life anymore. Are, but I, yeah. You know, I would try for you, but I, I don't know. We're going to be yelling, help me, please. You know, that's fine. I try to wear like platform boots and I'm like, these are hurting my shins now. I can't do these anymore. Like the really, really tight like boots you used to wear growing up. Like I still have like my my combat lace boots, but if they go any higher than like my shins, I'm like, oh, they're going to break my legs. I, I don't have the balance that's for this or the, the things mask. that we didn't think much of back in the day. But now we are hyper aware of it's wild. Yeah, I get massages every month now because my my neck sucks. Uh, and then it doesn't help that I sit in a gamer chair all day, even though it's a nice gamer chair. Shout out to Secret Labs. Um, it's still a gamer chair. <laughs> I don't okay. like my chair, but that's fine. You'll I'm not allowed to get a new chair because chair is a part of the community. Um, it. Is there, I, I is don't know. A, or is there a, is there an emotional attachment to your chair? Absolutely not. It wasn't even mine. My look, they have an emotional attachment to chair. I do not. My brother got me a very nice gamer chair for my birthday last year. And I can't do anything with it. I ended up giving it to my monster because I'm not allowed to change my chair. So I got it. I feel like Gretchen Wieners and I, I have this chair and I can't do anything with it because the Regina Georges won't let me change my chair. They threatened to mutiny if, if I do. I'm convinced like it's my biggest fear. I'm going to share my biggest fear with y'all is that I'm going to be just sitting here talking to y'all and this chair is going to break because it's well over 10 years old. And when it does, I'm going to fall out of this chair and I'm going to fall like a toddler and they're going to laugh and I'm going to end my stream. I told them I don't know when and I don't know how, but if this chair ever breaks, I promise I'm not even going to say bye. I'm just going to lay on the floor and end my stream. And I'll come back the next day, maybe. Well, you know, I, 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 those old, those office chairs, though, are good chairs. If you've had it for more than 10 years, it's a good chair. And they just know it. They're just looking out for you. That's all. And trolling you at the same time. I'm leaving. It's my biggest fear. Just the chair. I've a seen. Chair emote. <laughs> yes. I, chair has it. Yeah. It's the way everyone loves chair way more than me. I am literally last on the totem pole. And that's fair. Um. I don't know. I, I'm conv I've seen videos where someone will be streaming and they're just hanging out and their chair just breaks. And that is very scary to me. That's a, I don't have a lot of fears, but that is a fear for me. And I'm telling you, now, I'm just going to end the stream. I'm not getting up. I'm not talking to anyone. I might come back the next day. We shall see. All right. This little bugger won't leave me alone. This is Zura to everybody in the audience. This is my oh. monster. She's hungry. They thing is, it's like it's weird. I usually end stream at nine, but they know when I end any stream. Like they're both here going around my feet like little sharks right now. They can tell because they can tell that I'm gonna end stream here. And I'm like, I don't like how you guys. Think. The other one's right here too. I'll show you Katsu. Oh, he ran away. Okay, never mind. Katsu's bot. He knew. Bye, Katsu. He, that, he knew. That 
But uh, anyways, uh, we are getting close to time because we did start a bit early. Um, but I just want to say I am I am so I'm so happy you you signed with us. You're such a delight and you're so fun and you're so sweet. And uh, your community is awesome. I mean, from the ones that stuck behind and I, you know, you'll probably see my community in your streams and vice versa, too. I'll have to I hope so. Up. Come raid you <laughs> yeah, Katsu said not today, bitch. <laughs> you're gonna try to be on your stream. He's mad because he knows I have to leave tomorrow. My cat's getting anxiety when I leave the house. I'm like, are you Aww. traveling or are you are you gone for five minutes? I don't know anymore. Um, but anyways, kappa, kappa noodle. Um, you're a wonderful guest. I appreciate you so much for joining us today. And for anyone who is from your channel, if you would like to give me a follow and people from my channel or EG, if you like a cup of follow, you definitely should. We're both just giant emo girls. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll have another episode here in a few weeks. We always have great guests on the show. And um, yeah, that's really it. Thank you so much for joining. And I hope everyone, you all have a good rest of your evening. Thank y'all for coming out. Thank you for having me, Lisa. I, I look forward to everything. Thank you, EG. Um, <laughs> y'all have all been nothing but great since I have met you. Just thank you so much. I, I know it's late. So, Captain, thank you for coming out. I look forward to doing more and doing stuff on EG. If y'all haven't followed EG, follow the channel while we're yeah, still you're here. Yeah, you're part you know, of it now. And do the things. <laughs> and big congrats to joining us. Like, I mean, this is just the beginning. This is just the first level, you know? Yeah. This is just the first, I'm just the first boss. Well, okay? Cupton is happy to be evil. <laughs> they, they, are, they, they couldn't wait. They were like, we are evil now. They are here. This was their moment, and I, I love this for them. Well, we are more than ha we are so happy to have you here and cannot wait to see what what we're going to do together because we all silly stuff. Um, but anyways, uh, you guys have a good rest of your night. Also, thank you so much for rating the channel. It gave us some great of course. views. And uh, yeah, bye, everyone.